are we doing? Welcome. Bit of a different one today. Oh, I really refresh this thing. Why is it doing that? Hold on. All right, there we go. That's fixed. That's still behind, but it is what it is. It'll fix itself. Okay. Yeah, as I said, bit of a different one tonight. I don't know if I'll end up gaming later. We'll see what sort of time. I, I might. I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, the main focus of this stream, obviously, is going to be building a rig for this camera that I just got today. So, oh, when did I get this camera? Oh, was it like a month ago now? It was... Damn, maybe it was about a month ago. Anyway. Yeah, had this for like a month or something, I guess. And then today I uh, just got in the mail, got, got delivered today, my page for it and other accessories. So I'm gonna build as much of a rig as I really can. Like now I don't have a monitor. I don't have any sort of external power solution, like a VMA battery or anything like that. Don't have like Apollo Focus or don't have rods or a base plate or anything like that. But that's fine. This, um, at least what I've got now to start with, will be a very good start to, you know, the whole camera rig situation. And yeah, it should, it should help me, you know, make some better stuff. Um, I think honestly, more than anything, it'll help with the stuff that I actually film at work more so than the stuff I film on my own to start with, at least it, like, I do want to start doing some like other stuff that is a little bit more, you know, on the professional side, I guess, or at least that style is it? I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, so this will definitely help with that. Having a top handle will be really nice, but I'll talk about all the parts um, in a minute and like as I go, as I go with building it. And I did actually... Oh, that's not even pointing. Why is the mic not pointing at me? It's fine. I did... Oh, actually, no, I will change that. What is going on? I mean, well, to be fair, I do normally sit here. Does it sound fine? Yeah, it sounds fine. Oh, there's a dog barking. Shh. Also, I have this light brighter than I usually have it because this lens is uh, can't go as wide open as the other one. So, without pumping up all the like the ISO like crazy, I need more light to uh, to make this look good. So, we just have a brighter light here, and also I've well, I have, like to be fair. This light, the whole, this C-stand is like right behind me here. This light is usually behind me, acting as a hair light. Uh, but because I'm doing the whole unboxing thing, well, unboxing, I've already unboxed it. Um, but being able to see stuff on the desk and of course using this lens, I wanted to use this lens so we can get a bit wider. And yeah, so I, d I definitely needed more than just my light over here that that's with it off and it still looks decent here with this one but yeah this light just wouldn't be as much so that doesn't make sense this light wouldn't be enough for what i want to do especially with the whole you can't even see it can you right here no no i can't oh, i didn't realize that the i move that just slightly yeah that should be out of frame now but right here, I'm touching it now. I have my GoPro. So I've got my GoPro. I've actually got my friction arm that I usually have mounted on my C stand with. Oh no. Ah. So I usually have the friction arm with this uh, snap lock plate from PGY Tech on it. And then I have the plate, this plate, on the bottom of the usually this camera, but whichever camera I'm putting on it, 
and then I'll have this on the friction arm on the C-stand so then it's just there and it's somewhere easy to mount and then actually when I use this camera as a second camera for the stream I'll actually put it up behind me here on this on the friction arm but since I have the C-stand here and I needed some way to mount the GoPro because I wanted to have like two different angles because this lens isn't quite wide enough to like see the desk uh, so I decided you know I have GoPro why not just do two angles I thought of doing an overhead but it wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to get an overhead camera working as well as like as well as would be ideal very easily now I could put the c-stand directly behind me have it go straight over so the light is like right in front of me and then on the boom arm of the c-stand put the soup clamp with the friction arm on it and it's pointing straight down i could could have done that but this was way easier i literally just put the soup clamp onto the uh little stand that this camera's on and it's a pretty and it's a good enough view let's see can i can i show you just the so here's the gopro view there so this is it let's move that out of the way so this will be it. it's now it's a gopro so it's not going to look that good like especially in this probably not ideal lighting situation but what are you going to do and it looks like let's see what's the yeah at, i don't even know what the shutter speed is on if i can even control i don't know if i can even control it but oh wait no wrong one But yeah, um, so that's the whole setup, I guess. And then I might as well start building this thing. So I'll go through what I got. Obviously, A7 IV. That's so. It's for this. I've wanted a rig for a while, but I was never going to buy one for this camera. And I was never really going to buy anything for this camera. Like I bought the stuff initially. You know, I, I well, actually, the one thing I did buy after the initial purchase was a spare battery. But like that's that's a spare battery um but i decided that i, I wasn't going to ever buy anything for this camera because it's like why would i put in more money to this camera when i know i'm going to get a better camera at some point so i knew i wasn't going to buy anything for this one so i was like i'm not going to buy any better lenses i'm not going to spend more money on lenses for a cheap camera than it's worth so i didn't buy a cage for that but i waited until i had this and then they actually release an updated version of this cage. So this is actually the new version from Small Rig, their new cage. I'll, I'll explain the differences uh, in a minute. But I, I was I had a bit of a look at them and I was like, uh, this one, this in particular, like everything else I could have ordered and it would have been, you know, arrive in like two days on Amazon. Uh, but this was like, we were saying like the 12th of uh, January would be the first the first time like the earliest it can arrive so it's like okay i'll wait until january then i'll i wasn't gonna like order it all this stuff shows up and then i can't even use it because this is the one thing that i need for everything else to work so i decided i was gonna wait till january and then order it when i could get this you know soon after ordering it uh but then i checked one last time the other day and it was just available to be like all right you can get it in two days if you order it now. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. So we got the cage, the updated version of the A7 IV cage. And this is also the A7 S3 and A1 cage. As you can see, let's see, it's not gonna focus because it's focused back on me, but right there, it says A7 IV. And then on the other side, right there, it says A7 S3 and A1. So this is a little removable piece here with this screw. So you can either unscrew it completely, turn the thing around and screw it back on or unscrew it and then you can slide it back and forth. And this is basically just to lock the page to the camera through the eyelet on the side here. So it, it adds another point of contact other than just the screw on the bottom because like you put it, if you just put it through the screw in the bottom, yeah, it'll be there, but there can be some like some play there, so it can move a little bit. But that's that's just a, a good way to just be like right, lock in place. And then actually, I think this is new with the updated version. Is right there. You can see there's a screw. 
there's actually just another hole like right next to it that is a little bit further indented so if you undo that screw and put it in the other hole it just sort of will like it'd be right here or maybe it'll actually go into that hole but right here on the bottom of the camera is it there oh, it is i think it might be actually that hole there so it might go into that hole to sort of like lock it in place even more so that's a third point of contact to lock it in so i did build like i did sort of put everything together earlier like i opened it all up put it all together just so i knew what i was doing and because i didn't want to wait until i was live to actually open it so i was like ah, i'll just do it and i'll just take it all apart um but i didn't do that when i built it before i did do this one in but not the bottom one so i can do that i'll do that now so this cage um obviously through the bottom that's, that's a just quartering screw it is a captive screw Captive screws are so good. Just on everything, on anything that you can have captive screws, you should have captive screws. It's so nice. You don't have to worry about losing screws or finding them or anything like that. So it's just there. There's little rubber pads like here and on the front here. Like there, there, where it actually contacts the camera. So that's just sort of to protect, protect the camera. Um, on the inside, that's more or less it. There's a little flap here to open the battery door because with it closed, you actually can't open the battery door. I'll show you that when we, when we actually get it on. Um, so that's just to keep the... I don't know why that's there. I think something with the design of the a 7 IV, I think is because the battery door... Actually, you can see it right there. It's uh, right here. It's very close to the edge, the actual like door itself. You can see that it gets right to the edge here. So I don't think they could have made the cage you know actually go over that without the battery door so they're like oh, we'll just add a little door that you can open to open the battery door so there's that um on the cage itself what if you don't know by the way what a cage is for is basically to allow mounting of so many other things to it so there's a bunch of mounting holes on the bottom the top each side and then as you can see here there's hold you mount there and there and then there's quarter 20 and 3 8 inch threads just all over it uh the 3 8 inch ones like this one here you can kind of see there in the light there that does have uh re lo locating pins so if you use anything that has re lo locating pins then they're there um also same on the top there's Three eighths inch in the middle with the locating pins, then a bunch of quarter twenties around it. And then the other other thing on this side, so this is the left side, uh, is actually a built-in NATO rail. So a NATO rail, this is this is like an external one that you just screw on. It uh, allows things to slide on. So something like a handle, you slide it on, and it's on there. And then it's just like it's on there. So then it's easy to uh, put on and remove those accessories. So in this case, handles. So you can easily just like slide on, slide off if you need it or not. And I, I wanted to go like all NATO rails because this will be something that I will need to, you know, take the handles off, put the handles on, take the handles off sort of thing. Because I'm not going to be able to put it in a camera bag with handles on it. Um, but... Basically, my plan is to keep the cage on it at all times, but uh, make it easy to put on, you know, the other accessories like the handles and stuff. So if I was going to just go take photos, I would just have the cage and actually this strap that I haven't mentioned yet, but it's just a hand strap for the for one of the handles. Um, actually, I'm going to put it on the handle of the camera here. So that'll be like, I'm going to go take photos. It's just the camera in the cage with one strap and that's it. And then if I was going to, you know, take, if I was going to take it to work and film, film the whole thing. Then I would build it a certain way in a certain orientation with one or two handles. And just, I want it to be easy to set up and break down. So I don't have to spend five, 10 minutes setting it up. I can just get it out of the bag, click, click, done. That's it. So that's sort of how I want it to be. So that's the cage, like I mentioned, actually we can put this on now. So this is the small rig Black Mamba um, 
strap. I don't know. Um, I think the like the generic small rig one was like out of stock on Amazon or something like that. But this wasn't, so I was like, all right, sure, we'll get that. Um, it looks a little bit nicer, and it does have like a separate. It has two separate straps. It has a top one and a bottom one. I don't know if that's really beneficial, but the other one it just has one that threads th behind the entire thing, and then through again. Whereas this one, you attach the top one and lock it in and then you attach the bottom one and lock that in so it's just got a little like quick release here i might actually well while i'm talking i'll switch to the uh switch to that music is going way harder than, <laughs> than i feel like it should be uh where are we dual cam here all right so i'm gonna be here okay now i apologize for the gopro footage not looking very good it's, it's a GoPro and the lighting's not great. And it's just streaming by USB. So what are you going to do? Ideally, I'd use this camera, but I can't use this camera if I'm building this camera. So this strap. Now, now one other thing too is, so you can put this strap on the handle side of the camera itself on the cage. This handle also that I'll talk about in a sec, it also does have strap loops. So I could also put the strap on the left handle if I wanted to. However, I do want this strap to more or less just be on there all the time. And one thing that I sort of realized um, when I started, like one of the times when I walked, just went and actually the first time I took this camera out to just go and walk around and take photos, I noticed that a strap around the hand, just around that right hand would have been very helpful. Cause it's just like, you know, this is heavier than, you know, this camera so it's like it's heavier than i'm used to and if you're just walking around take photos and then walk for a little bit it's like all right okay you sort of feel it and you're like you feel it in your fingers just holding onto it the whole time but having a strap on there one it just adds more support and stability when you yeah you know, maybe if you're taking photos or video but also if you need to if, you, if you're just carrying it and you know you're not going to need it for a couple minutes you can literally just pull the strap down and it gets tight and then you don't even have to hold on to the camera it's just like locked onto your hand so that's sort of the idea behind behind this and also the added stability on uh on the on the hand as well so basically i'll make sure that's in the middle there so you can actually see it i'll move that over there so just threading that through and then i think how I, how I did it before is I had it fairly tight on the top. So I pulled it most of the way through. So you can have it like, I could have it like all the way out here. So it's really loose. But I think what I want it to be relatively tight on the top and then adjustable on the bottom, I think. So I think I'll get it relatively tight there. Snap that on and that should be pretty good. Then, now I don't know if this, I haven't actually checked. But no, it does not. Okay. So these little, you can see, see, it's so much, looks so much better on this camera. It's like, this one's, yeah, a bit closer. But anyway, you can see here and ooh, where are we? Here, there's a couple lines. So you can actually tuck these tabs sort of in, into the um, back of it. But they're not that deep. So you can't actually tuck the whole thing in, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but I'm doing the best I can. So get that sort of out of the way because I don't really want, you know, the straps just dangling. So that's on there. And then this will just do similar sort of thing. Thread it through. No, it has to go that way. So it goes through the cage, back around, and then it's just got like a pretty standard like uh, fastening. I don't know what you'd call this little thing where you go through that way. It's like the same as like a backpack strap. You go through one way and back through the other way. And then it's relatively easy to adjust. Um, but then I pull that through there and then from there I can adjust it. I can, you know, if I pull on this, it would get tighter and then I don't even have to hold onto it or I just pull up, pull up on this and I can loosen it, whatever you want. The one thing I did notice and I'll demonstrate in a sec, uh, once I get this on is that if you do have it too tight, it doesn't allow you to like turn your hand like this. So it sort of forces you to hold it like this. And then you, it's hard to reach the shutter button. 
So if if you are already recording or if uh, you're recording with my other dedicated record button that I have set this one as, then it's fine. It's like you can just you can hold it like this and that's fine. But if you do need to be pressing the shutter button at any time, then you would want it a bit looser just so you can move your hand a little bit. But I'm going to take the lens hood off just because it's a little bit wide and it's annoying to get in and out. So, if you can see that, oh, the li the lighting is just, well, no, not the lighting. The lighting is good. It's the GoPro that makes it look bad. <laughs> so, basically, this just slides sort of in to there. I'll actually just do it upside down so I can screw it in. And then once it gets there, then this will just sort of screw in. And what is nice about most, most cages, actually, they come with like a little tool to do anything that you would need to on installing the cage itself. So this has got a flathead, basically a screwdriver at one side, and it's got a little hex Allen, Allen key at the other end uh, for that, for those other screws that I mentioned before, the little ones. So just gonna screw this. This obviously just goes into the one tripod mounting hole at the bottom, it's just a quarter inch thread, and it just mounts on basically like a tripod. And We'll get that nice and tight and then so sort of like i mentioned before okay so it's on but i don't know if you can really see but there is a little bit of play there so it can move a little bit because it's only got that one mounting point on the bottom you can't see it it's got that one mounting point there but like i said if we take this screw out and then put it in the other side through the eyelet it basically, i do it the wrong way. Let's do it there so you can actually see it. So if I get this screw there, and then that's gonna go in on, through the eyelet into that same piece. Is that going? Oh, it's super weird going in on like being on that weird angle all right i just need to be able to see it for a sec all right so then that is screwed all the way in so it is now mounted to that eyelet and then now there's like nothing no play the only there's a little bit of play just sort of at the opposite corner just because it's you know it's attached on this corner and the bottom so there's an attached sort of like oh, let's see angle here and here so this corner over here, yeah, it'll have a little bit of play. But to make it even more stable, we can take this screw out. And I actually have, like I mentioned before, I haven't actually done this one yet. But we'll take that out and screw it. Oh, okay. So, ah, four. Where'd it go? It fell onto my chair and I cannot find it. There it is. Okay. Four. So let's see, we can see it close enough. I need to bring it, hold it back far enough that you can actually see it in focus. Cause if I hold it up close, it's not in focus. What about on there? But that quality is not good enough to see it. <laughs> Damn GoPro. Uh, anyway, it's like got thread like halfway and then it's like just a straight pin, I guess, for the rest of the way. But on the whole here, let's see. Which camera would be better on? Oh wait, what if we, here, yeah, this might actually work better. Where's focus? Focus is back here, hey? Yeah. So, it came, it was in, well, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah, it was in that hole. This hole is actually a little bit recessed. You can't see it that well. But, oh, let's go back up. Okay. Right. So, this hole is a bit recessed, so that means it'll go, so it's not going to go into that hole. It's actually just going to. I guess to create some tension by pressing into the body, like just the bottom of the body itself. So I guess we don't want to do that too tight, just enough that it adds some contact to the body. Yeah, and it just sort of stops there. Yeah, and actually you can s wait, hold on. No. We don't want to do that. Hold on, that that push way too much. If you can, you can actually see. If you look, I'll zoom in again. Oh, I need to not hold up my hand. I don't want to scratch stuff. 
Let's zoom in again. And you can actually see, let's see if I can get it right. There's a bit of a gap there now. You can see my skin right here because the pin pushed too far through. So I think either it's in the wrong spot or it's just not meant to go all the way tight, maybe. And I think maybe what I might need to do is do this other one up a bit tighter. That, whoa, turn off. I just accidentally turned the camera on. So that doesn't go any tighter. So I'm actually not 100% sure about this other, other screw. Oh, stop dropping stuff. Stay. Ugh. So I want to screw this in so it touches the bottom of the body, but not so it pushes it anywhere. So I'm going to see if I can see it. Can actually see it. As soon as it touches, I can actually see it move a tiny bit. So it's still pushing out, I think. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I, I'm going to just sort of leave that how it is. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh God, I zoomed that one all the way in. Okay, so then the cage is mounted and there's pretty much no movement except for that top right corner. There's a little bit of movement, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So now let's go back to this hand strap that we've got. So right now it's pretty loose. Like there's, there's a good amount of movement there. So I can easily, let's see if we can get it in both cameras. So I can easily reach the shutter I could hold it like this, but it's not providing that much support. But what I could do is I could pull this one super tight. And then now it's a bit harder to reach the shutter, but it's way more supportive. It's, it's pulling my hand into the handle. So it's taking a lot, a lot of pressure off my fingers. So I'm not having to like grip the camera really hard because it's, you know, it's there. And this sort of like, I don't know if, Reminds you of uh, old like camcorder days back when cameras were like you'd hold them like this with the strap of your hand and They still make those by the way. Um, they're just Very different to these sorts of cameras um, But yeah, so I think I'm gonna have it I want it just loose enough that I can Not that loose That I can reach the uh, shutter button pretty easy like enough room that I can move my hand this way uh, but tight enough that it actually gives some support either way. Also, why does that not look straight? That doesn't look like it's on straight. I think I did something wrong. Hold on. Oh, no. I th okay, so I think this screw actually is meant to go into the hole. I just had it slightly misaligned. Will it? Oh, yeah. Okay, that was, <laughs> that was my bad. I just didn't have it lined up properly. So... Okay, so that one's still fine. So... <laughs> okay, so this is actually... Is going to go into that hole that I mentioned before. Let's see if I can... If it's or if it's lined up there. So that should actually work way better. Don't push it away. Okay, so it's not lined up. Maybe I need to... I'm going to try loosening... The this one here. We'll loosen that so it's not like pulling anything too hard. And then I will actually just loosen the, the bottom screw as well. Just so it allows a little bit of movement. And then I'll make sure this actually does go into the hole. There we go. That's way better. It's not pushing into the body anymore. And then that's fully bottomed out. But it doesn't create that gap now. Nice. And then we'll do this one, get that fully tightened down. And then we'll tighten this one down and that'll just pull it back slightly, I guess. And there. Okay. That should be good. That looks way better. Way straighter. And there's no weird gaps. There's a little bit of a gap here for some reason. I don't know why. But, anyway, okay, 
So I figured that out. That's good. Oh, one thing too with the cage. And one thing that I can't really use yet, but I will soon, uh, is the bottom. It's actually, you can see it sort of from that angle, kind of. Wait, where are we? Here. Let's see if we can get some contrast. It's a bit hard. What about this one? Is the bot the base of it here is actually Arcus Swiss compatible? So you can slide that into an Arcus Swiss tripod, um, which I don't have at the moment. I have like the Snaplock plate here. I have this, but this is like a and same with the the uh, Peak Design capture clip I have on my backpack strap. Is these are like square? They're not, you know, just two sides and open at the ends. So, but proper Arcus Swiss stuff is open at two ends and it's just like us it's like a rail um so this would slide straight into it like that and then would hold it here and when i get uh, the pgy tech mantis pod that has that type of head so i'll be able to just use this straight onto that tripod without using a base plate which i didn't really realize until today because i was trying to figure out a way to have to keep this on but then also I was thinking of maybe mounting a NATO rail to the bottom as well. But the, the cage itself should go fine onto that um, that tripod or any other Arcus Swiss compatible tripod that doesn't have a fully enclosed square. So that's good. But on the bottom anyway, there are, what's that? Six, seven, eight. There's eight quarter 20 threads uh, right there. So I did actually try mounting an ADA rail to, to the bottom and it worked. I could mount both this and this, but then I couldn't actually use either of them because they sort of just block each other. So I can have them there, but I just can't use them. But uh, the reason that I wanted to put a NATO rail on the bottom is then so I could have a handle on the top, a handle on the bottom, and then have it like two handed for vertical shooting like this. And I'll, I'll sort of show how I planned on doing that, but I don't think that's going to be the most efficient way to do it. It would be good to be able to do it that way, but I can't really keep the NATO rail on the bottom if I want to use this with any, any, anything really. I can't really mount it on much with that NATO rail just being on the bottom like that because it would just be there. And that's just sort of in the way of any tripod head or like mounting plate or anything so i don't think that's going to be doable it's also it's obviously like possible it's like okay this situation that i'm in makes so much sense to have the two handles that way uh, let's do that but uh yeah it's not optimal or efficient so i don't think i'm gonna end up doing that the other thing that i thought of that i was that i wanted to see if would work but i don't think is going to work is putting the native rail on the side here under the, the hand strap, so on the handle side. So then I can mount the top handle and carry it like this. Let's go, I'll actually show it here, carry it like this. So then you can just tilt the screen down. You can see the screen and have the top handle there. But the annoying thing with that is like, then it's, it's this is not comfortable to actually like hold on to. Like if it's enough here, like it's plenty there because the cage is adding a bit of thickness then adding that on top, make it even thicker. Plus it's got these little like, it's got little bumps from the like locking pins. As you can see like that gold one there, is that like, that like presses in. And it's just, it's just not comfortable to hold. So I don't think that's going to be really that doable. Um, obviously if I need it for any particular thing, like it, it'll take like a minute to set up, but I'm not going to leave it there. Like I thought I might be able to. All right. So, oh yeah, also, while we've got the, the cage on here now, so the battery door, if I try and open it, I'm trying to be on both cameras at once, but it's not really working. So, like, I literally just opened the battery door and didn't do anything. But, if I open that, now I can open the battery door and I can get the battery out and whatever. So, it's just, they just sort of made that to accommodate the fact that it sort of, like, lines up well here, but for it to be thick enough to actually be good, then it kind of has to block that corner of the battery door. So they just made it a little door. You just open and close. So that works pretty well. Um, yeah, cool. So speaking of NATO rails, 
because I got NATO handles, I am going to put the NATO rail on the top here. And it pretty much, because I got the, I got a 50 mil, I got the smallest NATO rail that you can get. Um, I, I think this, this is the 50, you can get 90 mil and 70 mil ones as well. I did only get the 50, this is just like the smallest, cheapest one, but it's like a really low profile. So I think it was pretty good. And actually one thing I do like about it is the locking pins. So other, I think older NATO rails have, you know, two of these, they'll have one on each end. So there's a little, let's see if we can get it on here. This little gold bit, that's a pin that you sort of press down to slide things on or off. And it'll, so if you slide something on, it'll lock it there so it won't slide off. I'll show that in a sec. Uh, but most other NATO rails I think have like one on each end. This one, it does, but one of them is on the side and it's got like a, an angle on on the outside of it. So you can slide stuff on super easily, but then it locks so you can't slide it off. So I really like that. So you, you don't have to f like be all finicky with the, like pressing this down to slide the thing on. You could just slide it straight on from the, the other side. So I really like the fact that that's like that. And to make sure which way do I want to slide it on. I don't think it really matters. I'm going to do it this way. Also, so I got, I got one of these like separately, like I, I ordered one of these, but this handle also came with one. So I have two, two of the same NATO rail things. This one for some reason didn't come with a NATO rail. I don't know why, like it's a NATO handle, but it didn't come with a rail. I don't know what that's about, especially when this one did, but you know, whatever. Um, but I knew that even if I was going to put one on the side of the bottom, that this side of the cage itself is a NATO rail, so it's fine. I didn't need the second one, but I, I did want it just in case. Um, but the uh, the NATO rail came with a uh, Allen key, so we're just gonna screw that on there. All the all the screws for this are also the same, so like the one Allen key will work for everything, except for obviously the little ones that this one was used for. So I'm actually we're done with this, so I'm gonna. Uh, Pop that back in it's i'll just actually try and show it where we be here yeah so that just sort of like goes in there slots in and it's just magnetic so like you can't get it out because it's a little indentation but you gotta like slide it out so it shouldn't have any issues with staying in it should stay in pretty fine all right let's get this all the way down all right and we need to make the make sure these are actually like proper tight because we don't want to be like holding on putting all the weight, because literally all the weight of the camera, if you're holding by the top handle, will go through this rail on these two screws. So you need to make sure that that's tight. Um, okay, so that's on. Now this top handle, NATO. So that's basically, you can see here, it's got like the, a rail there. You can, you can, there's two ways you can slide on. So you can either just like undo it like all the way and then just sort of like clamp it on and then tighten it all the way up or undo it again or if you have it most of the way tight and then like i was talking about with that little pin on the back there you can slide that on now it's on and it won't come off on its own even if it's loose but then so i'll just put it like right in the middle there and then i'll just finish tightening it down so i think that's the way i'm gonna do it is have it you know so if i need to take it off i'll do like half a turn press down slide it off and then it's there and i don't need to like you know, wind this thing too much. So just slot it on, put it in the middle and then get that half turn, tighten it down and that's on. Now this handle, I got this handle for a few reasons. One, one is, I feel like the wood, 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 the wood feels better than just like metal. So like there are all metal ones. I was gonna get a metal one with a record, with a recording button on it. So like right here where my thumb is, it's actually got a button and then there'll be a USB port right here that you can then plug into the multi-interface port right here, which is basically like a USB USB type B port um, for, you know, flashes or remotes or, you know, handles like this. So then you can start record, start and stop recording with a button on here. So you don't have to reach down to this one, especially if you're holding it in your right hand. But, uh, now I actually talked about this in the video that I filmed today that'll go out later this week. 
Or next next week, I guess. It's Saturday. Uh, don't tell me the bit rate's going... Where are we? Bit rate's 5,000. Alright, if there's any weird stuff with the stream, I apologise. I don't know what my internet's doing. Anyway. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so... Yeah, I filmed a video today about my custom buttons for this camera. And I actually have this C3 button right here as record. So if I'm holding the camera like this, I can just do that and press the button. So we're on here. I can just press it with my thumb here with my other hand or however I want to do it. Or, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Or if I'm holding it on here, then I can just press it with my index finger, press the shutter button. So now I have two options to start and stop recording. So... That's why I didn't get the uh, the recording handle. But one other good thing about this handle, apart from the wood, is you can see this like knob here. If I undo that a little bit, the handle actually rotates. So I could have it. I can. It can be used. I just unscrew. Oh, I am. <laughs> I was just unscrewing the entire thing. So I can have it here, or I could rotate it sideways. And then if we screw it back down, now it's a side handle. So I could use it either as a side handle, or if I want to, you know, shoot vertical video, boom. It's now it just has a side handle on it. So this is sort of the idea that I was thinking of to do it like handle like this and this. However, this is a left hand, which is annoying. So I would have to do it the other way, put the left hand on this side, rotate this the other way, obviously. But then the annoying thing is I'd have to have the screen like that. Whereas I would prefer to have the screen like that. So I would, I would prefer to be looking at it that way rather than that way. And because with, with these cameras, especially with the ASM4, it does get pretty hot. You don't want to be shooting with the screen closed if you're like recording video. So you do want to have it open at least to some degree. So like you wouldn't want it any more closed than that. And ideally you would want it lower so you know the handle's not in the way or anything like that, but it is what it is. So that's gonna be sort of a trial and error sort of thing with what I feel like works best. But that's uh yeah, that's one of the reasons why I got this handle. And let's put it back back to like normal top handle alignment. So it's just on there and then yeah, top handle. And the wood probably does feel nicer than it would if it was entirely metal. Now this handle also has, obviously like with any of this stuff, it's going to have a heap of mounting points on it, like the cage itself. I feel like this uh, this handle actually has more mounting points than the cage. So on the top, you can see, you really cannot see it in that GoPro, can you? That is terrible. Bruh, oh, if we get the light to hit it right. Right, there, okay, there we go. So... Obviously, so you can see two quarter 20 inch, quarter quarter 20 uh, threads, quarter inch threads, and then a three eighths inch with RE locating pins, and then another another quarter inch, another uh, three eighths, another quarter, another three eighths. So it just keeps going, it alternates. And then there's four RE locating pins for each of the three eighths inch threads. Um, I think so you can have it like either way, because I'm pretty sure Usually, like, it'll only have two, like this first one does. Um, but with the four, you can have it, then you can, like, alternate which way you do it. I don't know. Um, so that's that's on the top. Then on this side, let's see if we can get the light to hit it properly. It's just, like, a bunch of quarter-inch thread holes there. On this side, there is two. Well, there's actually a couple at the front as well, uh, up here. There's a couple here, and then there's a couple here, and then right here is actually just another Allen key. So it's just another, like, you can look on this camera. You can see it there as well. It's, like, it's the same as this one, but it just sort of, like, it just goes in there and it's just held in there with a magnet. So that's just sort of there. You always have that Allen key. So that's cool. And then on the back, let's see if we can get the light to hit it properly. Whoa, what happened there, GoPro? What are you doing? Yeah, this is a cold shoe mount. So if I get get my wireless go two, put the uh, 
receiver on there, I can just go ahead and there. So on my handle now, I have a wireless audio receiver that I would then just plug in to the camera itself. Now, there's also two cold shoe mounts on the body itself, so you could put it there or over on this side, you can put it there. So it doesn't really matter where you put it. There's a bunch. I, I actually really do like the angled one, especially for the wireless one, the wireless go to as well. Like it's just, it's very out of the way over here. Like it's not in the way of anything. If you have like a full on mic, like, like my video might go to that I might put on later. Um, it, like it takes up a lot of room, but this just sort of like nice and discreet, just sort of on the side. And then you can just plug that straight in right next to it. Um, so there's a cold shoe on the back. There's also a cold shoe on the front that is actually lockable. So let's try not to break stuff. So let's see if we can get the lighting right again. Actually, no, before we get to that, another just three eighths inch with four locating, RE locating pins on the front. So for mounting monitor mounts, anything else that you would um, want to mount on top handle. And then on the top of the front here, see would be a good angle to actually show it i feel like i'd be better off just zooming in with this camera rather than trying to show stuff on the gopro because it just doesn't look that good uh but right here as you can see right here where my finger is touching there and then you can actually see that a little bit moving so that is similar sort of thing to the side locking pin on the data rail is it locks whatever it, you put in the cold shoe in there. Now, I don't think this is going to work with the Wireless Go 2 because it's not an actual cold shoe like square. It's like a full thing. So that just sort of like holds it down. But if I get my video mic go to, now the bottom of it is just square, roughly. So if I slide that in, you can try and hear it as well. You hear that click. And now, that's not going anywhere. So I can slide that back and forth and it just hits that stop basically. And then if I just push it down on the side there and it slides out, so that'd be good. I think actually I'm maybe if I do use it like this, I might put the mic on the front like this on the top. I mean, cause like it's not in the way of anything. I don't have any monitors right now. So I would probably put a monitor up here either onto the front with the three eighths inch or on the cold shoe. When I do get a monitor, like that's probably where it would go. But right now, I think the mic would be good there, either there or probably on the angled cold shoe over on the side. But that does sort of get in the way of the handle, the left, the side handle, but this also does have a cold shoe, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, so, yeah. So that's the top handle. And I just forgot that it has the lock, so I need to actually like unlock it. So there's that. Now, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this other NATO rail all the time, because I did actually try putting it on on top of this NATO rail to like push it out a bit further, but it actually is more in the way. And I'll show you why in a sec. But this handle is now this is this is like an this is a more expensive one. Uh, it's it's a really nice like rubber, like the front and back are a nice rubber. Got a cold shoe on the top if we can actually see it. Culture on the top where those arrows are. And then it's got four quarter inch and one three eighths inch thread. And then as I said before, it's got the uh, like strap mounts. So you can strip thread a strap through. So I, I could potentially put this strap on this handle. So if I wanted a handle on the left side and not on the right for some reason, then I could. Um, but I do want to keep the strap on the right just because if I take all the handles off, I still want the strap on there for just walking around taking photos and just that extra stability. But this one slides on super easily because it's just NATO rail and because the NATO rail is built into the cage, I slide that straight on and boom, there it is. And then I just tighten that down. That's the wrong way. And what I've sort of figured out is if I'm just filming it, if I'm just using it like this, right? It works great. It's perfectly good. And I, and I actually like it the best if I put it all the way up 
because then I can put it down and it's level with the bottom of the cage, so it's actually flat on the ground on the table. So that's sort of ideal, but if we look at this side, ugh, the light, it's like the, the dynamic range on the GoPro is terrible. Uh, you just can't see. Okay, let's go there, I guess. But, so this is the uh, HDMI port. And I can't open the door because of the, the NATO mount of this handle. So, what I can do is slide it all the way down to the bottom. It'll still lock on and then I can open the door. So I'll basically, at the moment, I don't really need a handle and HDMI at the same time because I don't have a, like a portable monitor to put on this camera. So for now, I'll just basically have it mounted all the way up the whole time. And then when I do get a monitor that I put on the camera and then whenever I'm using a monitor, I'll obviously need to put the handle all the way down the bottom like this, which when you're using it, I think it's perfectly fine. Like it's still, st like it's still very easy to, to hold. It's just, you know, you put it down and it's a little bit, a little bit tilted. Let's, let's do that. So it's a bit tilted there. So it's, it's still relatively stable, but it's not flat. So that's sort of one downside to this using the built-in NATO rail. But if I put this NATO rail on top of the other one, it's even more in the way. So, and you can't actually mount it this low. So I'm not actually going to put this other rail onto this one. So I'm just going to use it like this. Um, but yeah, like I said, up the top and it makes it nice and flat on the bottom and that's gonna ha that's gonna be how I use it for the most part now and then when I get a monitor I'll just have to deal with it putting it lower um, if I want something plugged into the HDMI now like I do use the HDMI port whenever I'm filming a video here like if I'm just filming here I'll plug it into either this monitor or this monitor if I put the monitor on my c-stand or if I'm close enough to my desk, I'll use my 4K monitor. Um, but if it's just on a mount on a tripod or on the C-stand or something like that, I don't need the handle on it. So I can just take the handle off and it's easy enough because it's an ADA rail. Take the handle off and yeah, just plug it in. So that's fine. That's not going to be an issue. But the other good things about this, this uh, handle is also, I, I didn't realize this initially, but like Allen key. It is like the hide Allen keys uh, inside stuff. So little in there and then it just magnet. It's just held in there by a magnet. So it's not gonna come out. So I have two Allen keys just like on this rig right now that are just out of the way. Plus, well, I guess three, three, two of the same size Allen keys, then a small Allen key with a flathead, like screwdriver, I guess. Um, which is actually quite nice. So that means like anytime I need to put any sort of plate like these plates This plate here it not only is the same allen head size as These ones in the handle or this one so all, all the all the screws on this and this is the same size allen key But also this one you can see it sort of has let's see if we can get it up close to the GoPro That's got like a flathead as well. So it's like allen key and flathead Usually I'll use a coin for that. I'll either use the Allen key or I'll use a coin. I actually keep a 10 cent coin in my camera bag for that reason, uh, because my Gorillapod, that thing, it has a, um, just like it's just a single slot for a flathead. So the coin works fine for that. And for the PG, no, this is the PG right tech. For the peak design plate for the capture clip, it's just a straight line through. No, wait, no, that's just an Allen key. This one's both, this one's nice, it's both, but this will be good so that anytime I'm trying to put anything on my camera, if I'm going to keep the cage on pretty much all the time, then I'll always have a flathead screwdriver with the camera. So that'll be nice. Um, and then I'll also have Allen keys if I need it that are easily accessible. Um, okay, back to this handle. One, The reason that it's so expensive is much like the top handle, it rotates, but I think it actually rotates much better. So this one, like you have to like unscrew this a bit because it's got a like teeth in there. So you have to unscrew it and then you can rotate it and then it locks in on certain positions. Whereas this one, as you can see like this right here, I'll try and get it on both cameras. 
what if I just... Mm, no. So, right where your thumb sits right there, if you push down on that, you can just have, like, free rotation on that one. So, and then you just, like, go and it locked, wherever you put it. It's not like, it's not like this one where it has, like, specific spots because of the teeth. This just, like, you can put it there. So, if you're doing, like, you know, if you're shooting straight up, you can tilt it like this, and then you can do that. Or, you know, if you're shooting straight down, and you want to still hold it vertically, you can do that. It's just very versatile, I guess. Or, if you need it to be a certain angle to get out of the way of the flip screen, then you can, you know, tilt it a certain way. Now, I think what I'm going to have to do is if I am using it, if I'm filming it, if I'm filming, like, in landscape, then I'm not going to be able to, like, actually wrap my hand around the, the grip like this, no matter how I have it. I've tried a few ways. But if I have it like this, I'm going to have to sort of, like, false grip it where my thumb goes around or on top. I'm not going to be able to put my thumb around because right there it sort of, like, covers... Let me get on here. Right here, yeah. So my hand sort of goes onto the screen there. So either I have the screen slightly off, so it's just not all the way out, or I just false grip the, uh, the handle, which I think will be fine. Because, yeah, I can't really, there's not really, I have no ways that I've really tried that uh, work really well. The one thing actually I think I could do is if I have it all the way down, so like I would if I had something plugged into the HDMI, and then if I angle it, I still have to false grip it, but I feel like there's a bit of an easier false grip because it is angled slightly. So if that's so it's sort of at that angle now. And then I can sort of have the monitor at an angle as well. So because usually you'll have the monitor facing up at you, you know, and you're above it. So like that this will work. Um I think for the most part, if I just leave the uh grip up the top and then just leave it level, I can tilt that back and I can just false grip that and it should be fine. But yeah, so that's sort of the plan with that. And then one thing too with this one, because it is rotatable, I could potentially also use it as a top handle for filming vertically. So I could literally just do this and be like, all right, we're filming vertically now. Let's do that. But what I can also do is because both of these handles are rotatable, I can they can just be like interchangeable. So I could either leave them where they are rotate. Yeah, see, this one is a bit more annoying to rotate because you have to unscrew it a few few things and then you know hope you get it right and stuff like that whereas this one's just super smooth and easy to rotate so if i want to film vertical content then we have that the downside to this is like i was saying with the screen before you now the screen's at the top i don't want the screen at the top i want the screen at the bottom but to have a handle on top and have the screen at the bottom i need to put it on this side which doesn't really work can't really put a nato rail on there and leave it on there all the time and it'd still be comfortable to hold so that's not ideal but i think this one will be okay um either this or the one other thing that i can do is i can put this handle on the bottom here just by putting this nato rail on so i put this get there screw them on oh I should have put the camera down before I started doing this, but it's fine. It works. So if we put the NATO rail on the bottom, let's just make sure they're tight. So NATO rail is now on the bottom, which means now I can't realistically mount it to anything uh, because the NATO rail is too close to the other mounting holes, like these mounting holes. Um, so I can't just like leave it there all the time if I ever want to mount it on anything, which I will. Um, and then what, what was I going to, I was going to move this hand, no, unscrew it there, slide it off there, slide it on there. And then now we have two handles like that. And now this I think will work. So this is sort of fine. I could always, you know, either swap the handles. Uh, now this is a left-handed one so like i can flip it and like use it right-handed but it just doesn't feel right because it is like it's got like slight it's got the shape of you know it's built for left hand um so i could do it that way i could swap them swapping them again you know it would take 30 seconds um it would make it more comfortable however 
you know, it maybe not necessary to, you know, if you want it, if, if it's not for, you know, all, an all day sort of thing, maybe it's not worth like swapping them like that. But if you're going to be spending the time to put on, you know, a native rail on the bottom of the camera anyway, maybe it would be worth it just like have it the exact way you want it to be as comfortable as possible. So yeah, so that's this, this might be how I film this actually very likely might be how I film vertical videos, particularly at work. But what I also will likely do is here, slide that on, put it roughly in the middle. So now we have a top handle on the side. And then if I turn it back to its like normal orientation, as a regular top handle. Yeah, I am a little disappointed with how easy this, with how not easy this is to adjust, but it's not too bad. So then now I could, I could either just run it like this, but that's kind of awkward. Because if you're gonna be running it like top handle, then you're gonna sort of have it down lower like this. So I could, I, I guess I could do the, actually no. I hadn't thought of that, but this one actually works really well. If I turn this handle, so now I'd have two more or less horizontal handles and I could run it like that. The only downside now is I can't really see the screen because I'm looking at it from, let's say roughly that angle and the uh, handle is covering a good chunk of the screen. So that's sort of annoying. That's when a actual monitor would come into play. So. You know, I do plan on getting probably a Ninja 5, um, so then I can record as well. Um, because, yeah, I, I, I can definitely see the benefits of being able to record on a monitor rather than just using it as a monitor. Because one could record to SSDs and then not have to worry about SD cards. And also record if I ever want to record like settings of the camera or record exactly what I'm seeing on the camera with like all the info and the, you know, the autofocus tracking and stuff like that, any settings that would also be good to have. So having just a regular monitor that you can't record on, it's just, you just miss out on that little bit of functionality. But I think this setup, apart from the whole screen situation, I think it'd be good. I just, yeah, it just would be nice to have, this is when it would be ideal to have a monitor here. So I would just put a oh, carrot like this. Obviously I'd be standing up Have this slightly tilted, not all the way horizontal. I think, I think it'll be like a few degrees up. So like sort of that angle, that seems to be the most comfortable top handle. And then I would put a monitor either on the three eighths inch with the R8 locating pins or the cold shoot at the front of the top handle. So that's sort of when I, I don't know. So the thing is when I can justify buying a monitor but i also just i want to get i want to get another lens before the thing is like i could have just not bought all this stuff and kept saving for my next lens but i also think that this stuff will actually really help and it was an easier upgrade than you know waiting a few months to save for a lens but i do sort of want to i do want the next like upgrade to be a lens because I literally only have this lens. This is the 20 mil f1.8. It's great, but it's only 20 mil, and I want something significantly more. I really do like the look of telephoto lenses, so I definitely want to get. I was actually looking that I could have got a used 85 Sony, 85 mil Sony, like the standard one, the old one, not the G Master, for like 500 bucks, and it's like an 800 lens. Uh, but I don't know. It's like, dude, but then that, then I would feel like I'd be sort of settling. Cause it's like, yes, I could get that $800 lens, but also could get a $2,700, 135 G master lens. <laughs> but the difference is like, is that difference worth it? Especially since I'm not making any money out of this at the moment. So yeah, that's, that's the big thing with lenses. Like I want to get all these nice lenses. But they're so expensive and I have no no way to like financially support them other than just literally just saving for them uh, because 
I don't have then like the whole camera thing isn't making me any money yet but we need, we need to get to a thousand subs we need to start making money so subscribe tell everybody to subscribe um yeah so that's pretty much that i think i don't know can anyone anyone see any other configurations that i could do like oh also one thing that is uh kind of nice is because of all the cold shoe mounts, so I can now have, what, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five extra cold shoe mounts now. So now I don't need to take off the uh, little cold shoe cover and then put it back on again, because I actually, I think I lost the one from my G85. I don't know where it went. It's just missing. I, I looked everywhere I could think of that it would be, could not find it. So I don't know where it was, where it, where it is, but I've like, been sure to keep this and I like because this is a multi interface shoe like it has like little pins in it and I think you can really see that but it's got little contacts in there for like Sony's like built in not built in they're like mics and I think they're flashes as well they can like connect directly to the camera with no wires um so I kind of want to protect that so I don't want to just leave it off and get like you know moisture in there and get some corrosion so I kind of want to keep this in there whenever I'm not using it but that just means if I want to put a mic on then I have to take that out and I have to put it somewhere and then it just increases the chance of losing it so I, th I think this would be really helpful for that and, I, and like I can just leave that because if I have five other options for mounting things with cold shoe I never need to take that off pretty much uh, so I'll probably I think most of the time I'll use it either here or on the top of this one or on the top actually the front of either or the top of either handle or the angled one on here. So I don't really see myself using the back culture mount of the handle much, um, nor this one over on the side, which is actually new with this version of this cage. Now the old version of the cage, the A7 IV, let me just take this handle off. The old version, it just had, I think it, it was just like a straight, let's see if we get it actually in frame here. It was just like a straight bar here. And I think it had a couple of like, Quarter inch threads i think it had a couple holes in it but that was about it um but this one they just added another college mount the one downside to it though which could i guess be an upside for certain things but this one on this on the other side like you put it in and it just goes in because it's enclosed at the front so it can't go any further whereas this one as you can probably see you can actually see it here with my hand blocking it there you can see straight through it so you can actually just slide straight through it and it just like you, you would have to put it on and then you know lock it down and make sure it's like roughly in the middle now that's not a problem for something like this or even for the wireless go too because it's like a clip it's not a just a cold shoe i guess it's like a cold shoe clip so those two things will be fine and most most cold shoe mounted things would have some sort of locking mechanism where you can like tighten them down um, but the, yeah, but the downside to this one is I think it's a good position for just having the mic. The one downside is it's opposite where the, the plug is. So if I'm plugging, plugging the mic in, I would have to run the cable all the way across. So I'd have to actually undo, I have it wrapped around the mic a couple times to make it a bit shorter, but I would have to undo it a little bit. Can we, there, yeah. and then run it across the top or run it somewhere. Maybe, maybe run it like down the front here out of the way, that would be fine. But just the fact that I would then have to have this cord running across the camera to there to then be plugged in, where whereas I could have it right next to the plug and then I could even wrap the cable around the mic even more and then I wouldn't have all this extra loose cable. So I could actually, you know, I'll do this, wrap it around a couple times, shorten that cable right up. Hopefully that wasn't too many times. Oh, now it's too short. <laughs> or I could actually just do that. that. That works. So then now I have like no like loose cable. It's just like wrapped around a couple of times. You can barely see it. And then obviously this would be on the top. Put that back on there. But yeah, the main reason that I got the NATO rail stuff, like both, both handles being NATO rail. Why is that not going on? Is so I can just 
easily change them or take them off or put them on or whatever I need to do. And not have to worry about like just having that built-in NATO rail on the side and then just adding one to the top. And I can just swap them. I can take them off, put them in my bag and it's fine. Now, when I do get my next camera bag, I'll need to, I'll probably have like a compartment. It's like, that's where all my rig stuff goes because you know, the camera will keep the cage on it and that's about it. It'll keep the one NATO rail and then the handles and everything will have to go, you know, in another spot, but I'll probably have a spot and be like, that's my camera rig stuff. That's where that all goes or something along those lines. But yeah, this is probably sort of how I run it. And then I could even slide this on, get that right up there. And then, so this handle kind of, so maybe I won't have it like all the way up, I'll put it most of the way up so it doesn't actually touch the mic. Put it like there because yeah, otherwise it was touching the mic a little bit. But that's pretty much, that's the setup. Maybe put the lens hood on so it looks fully assembled. And yeah, so that's, yeah, watch, let's go, time to go film a movie. <laughs> nah, this camera is way too small to fi film a movie. You need like a Sony Venice or an Ari Alexa or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, so the one, yeah, the one downside to having the side mount or the angled uh, hold shoe is that it's sort of in the way of that handle. So, yeah, if I have that handle on there, I'll probably use this front one, I guess. And then that'll, that'll just sort of go there. And then it also, the benefit of this, not only is it way out of the way of everything, is it's also closer, technically, to the subject. Because now <laughs> it makes it a lot taller and look kind of weird. But it does move it further forward. So, like, before... what? So the culture mount on... Right, so the culture mount on the camera, let's go on the GoPro here. Maybe we're just not going on the GoPro here. So let's try and line it up. The culture mount on the camera is here, where my finger is. Then the the other one on this side, that, that, that second one they added in this version, is like the same level. The one, the angled one is slightly further forward. The one on this handle is also back there in line with the others, or like between the camera and the the angled one, but then this one is like a way out in front, so then I can actually have the mic further forward, so I can be closer to the subject sound if this is what I was going to be doing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll play around with it, but I do definitely like having the ability to just put the whole thing down flat. Oh, that's what it was. I was wondering why I wouldn't go down flat because I still have this nader rail on the bottom. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this extra NATO rail now, because uh, I paid $18 for it. Uh, but I don't know how much I'm going to use it now, because I thought that I'd be able to put it on the right side. But it's just not comfortable to like hold, like if I have it on there. Like now I can always do it if I know that I'm not going to be holding the camera like this. And I'm like, okay, I'm only going to be top handle holding it this way. Then maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll put it on because it, you know, like, it only takes you know fifteen seconds to put on, and then you know another fifteen to change the handle over. So that's that'd probably work, but it's just I don't want to leave it on there all the time because it's not comfortable to hold with a NATO rail in the palm of your hand while you're trying to hold the camera. But this is probably how I use it most of the time. Well, actually, honestly, not really, because at least at the moment. Like, this will be how I, like, film, like, B-roll and stuff, probably. Because one of the other benefits of a rig is, if you didn't know, is it just adds a lot of weight. So, like, these... One, one of the things with, like, cameras getting lighter and stuff is, like, oh, yeah, it's so much lighter and portable, and that's great, too, even though this is much heavier than my other camera. Um, <laughs> but adding more weight to it, it prevents, you know, the micro jitters of, you know, having a really light camera. Or what you'd have on your phone so just adding more weight and then adding more stability with you know the strap another handle so you're not just you know holding it like this so you can like hold two handle here you can go this one and then you can actually hold it low or however you do it so it just adds a lot more stability and weight 
to create like smoother movement so you can get those like actual natural looking handheld shots that don't look shaky because you know a lot a lot a lot of times you might want to get you might want to be aiming for that handheld style shot that you would see in you know movies or documentaries or tv shows or whatever but it's like it's handheld but it's handheld with a heavy camera so it's very different to just the, just the camera by itself recording because yeah the weight does make a big difference when it comes to those like particularly the micro jitters it'll just slow down the movement as a whole because physics um but yeah probably how i'm going to be using it to film like reels and stuff because that's what i do at work uh, when it comes to filming stuff is it's mostly for reels now what i could do is i could just film everything horizontally in 4k and then just crop it to be because like 4k is 2160 tall right it's 2160 pixels tall and then 1080p is 1920 by 1080 so if i oh sorry yeah but switched so like vertically it's 1080 wide and 1920 tall so 4k is still 4k horizontally is still taller than 1080p vertically so what you can do is film horizontally and then just crop uh into you know that middle bit of the frame or, or you can move it side to side even and you'll still have the full resolution if you're just publishing in 1080 so I could do that, I could just film everything in 4K, and that this camera does 4K really well. This camera, I had never really filmed in 4K on purpose for those sorts of videos. Um, but I could do that, or I could just do what I have mostly been doing and filming vertically. Um, but I think if I, if I film vertically, I think either I'll put one handle on the top, one handle on the bottom, so it'll be turned this way, so it'll be holding it here, turn this one this way or put the top handle on one of the sides like well actually like how i did it before how i put the top handle on here the side handle on the bottom and turned it so they were both relatively horizontal but then the screen was sort of getting blocked so i guess if i was gonna if i was gonna do that anyway if i was gonna like spend the time to put on a native rail anyway i guess i could just Will that go on there? Will that... Now, I did try this before. Um, I said, oh, okay. But the strap sort of makes it annoying to, like, put on and off. It's not really in the way after you've got it on and off, but just sort of there, you know. So put that there. So this was sort of my, like, what I thought... I would end up doing that's why i wanted to get a nice low profile net around because you can get thicker ones but like that is it's just not that comfortable <laughs> it's it's sticking into my hand it's like and you can see it there too like it's just it sticks out a lot you can see it's like six millimeters which is a lot more when you're already adding a bunch to the uh, and it just sort of like digs in your hand a bit and it's, it's just not that comfortable so i'm not going to use it like that all the time but let's get rid of this mic. I might put it back on. But if I put this handle on here, then I can do the, I'll take this one off so it actually looks right. So then this was sort of how I was thinking I would end up doing it with the screen down the bottom handle on top because this is the way that I, normally this is actually how i feel most of my stuff so far was just holding it like like normally like this obviously without this handle there and then i would film it like this with the mic just on the culture on the top and then but one thing i did notice is we did there was this one reel we did where i was like sort of running along chasing you know the subject and i was sort of running along like this and like I had the stabilization on, so it was it looked okay, and it looked relatively natural. But I think this sort of thing would make it way easier to 
to do one i can hold it lower so we can get that you know just different angle but then also this i feel like is easier to move with than holding the camera normally like this with no straps or handles just literally gripping onto the camera itself but i think this could be the play or ideally eventually when it, whenever i do get a monitor probably this way putting the uh the top handle just on the left side and then just putting it on here and then i can just put a monitor on here and then it's right there and then that'll that would be the way that i do it so then i don't have to worry about this strap being in the way or anything it's just sort of there and then i can just film like this because right now yeah that screen just sort of if, if i don't really need to see exactly what's going on at all times i could probably just do it that way but yeah this isn't going to really work that well without a monitor although let me try one thing though because i can turn this around i could also just i feel like it'd, wait hold on i feel like it'd be easier to just take off and just slide on the other way then turn it all the way around because this nader rail this nader rail i do like the nader rail that's built in because it doesn't have a lock so you can literally just slide stuff on and off so easily Turn on Hello? Why is that not going on? Yeah, okay, there we go. Ah, but I can't lock it that way. That's annoying. <laughs> what about if I go there? Is that going to lock? Yes. Right. So what I could do is I could run it like this, which actually might work pretty well. You can see it on that camera. I, I don't know. Is there even any point in showing on the GoPro? It just doesn't look as good. So this might be doable. Oh, you know what would be good is if you could also like slide it back and forth. So I could have it like in the middle. That would be cool. Uh, does anyone make a, a, a top handle like that? That's like fully adjustable forward and backwards. Because it's nice to be able to like, you know, have it this way or this way. But I just wish there was a little bit more room on this side and maybe a little bit less on the front. So if I could just slide it. Or like just move it to you know if there was maybe if there was a couple holes on the bottom here i could just like you know put it here instead of here so then i could actually just fit you know more fingers behind but this one might work actually pretty well if i had a heavier lens i think it would actually work i could just hold it like this um but because this lens isn't particularly heavy it's a uh, very back heavy right now so i kind of have to go like two fingers each side which works um so i think this this might work this might be the way if I just want to do easy, um, lower sort of vertical content. So that'll work if I want just the top handle. And then of course I can, if I want to add the uh, side handle on here, like do it like that, then that'll, that'll work as well. I wonder, I don't think I can really add the NATO rail in any other way. So I think that's pretty much the only way. And I can put could put the other hand on here but that's not really gonna help or i guess actually wait hold on let's try just sort of this is just turned into like after i actually built it i'm just, just turning into experimentation now just sort of figuring out what i can do uh, because i i did a little bit of that earlier today when it arrived but um then i took it apart because i wanted to do this on stream so that's there and then if I put this one on here, I do really like this side handle. It is nice. Now, if I do it that way, if I use this as a, oh no, this doesn't work as a top handle nearly as well. Like it doesn't get in the way as much of the, uh, the screen, but it's, it's way too thick. It's way too wide, like deep, like this way, front to back. I guess I could do it. That way and i could just hold it like that what if we do it i could hold it the way you meant to hold it but oh that doesn't work or i guess i could i can have it slightly angled do something like that have it out a bit that could work although i can really i can really feel that in my arm though so i don't think that's going to be definitely felt easier holding it with the top handle 
and holding that because this one, I, this one I really have to grip because it's so much thicker. Whereas this one, I can literally just hook my fingers under and they just sort of stay there. So I think for the most part, we're gonna we're gonna go with the top handle being a top handle and the side handle being a side handle. But the side handle doesn't work as well as a top handle, but the top handle does work reasonably well as a side handle. So that's good to know. Now we'll get rid of this NATO rail. I wonder, oh, what else? Okay, so I, I currently don't have anything else that would go on via a NATO rail, but I could put this NATO rail on, for example, on the uh, on one of the top of one of the handles. So then if I got maybe a NATO monitor mount, then I could, you know, mount it to the monitor via a NATO rail instead of via the cold shoe or uh, the 3 8 three eighths inch thread on the front. But is there any benefit to that? Like, is there much of a benefit of having... So let's say I put this here. I screw that NATO rail on there. How is that beneficial compared to putting a monitor mount here or here? I feel like these two would just be better in general. And if, yeah, I, I don't really see much benefit of putting the NATO rail here unless I had something specific that I wanted to mount via the NATO rail. I guess I could put it on the side, but then if you put it on the side, then that's sort of getting in the way of your, your grip, I guess. I could put it maybe up the front here. But then again, like what, what am I going to mount for that? I don't have anything else at the moment that would uh, mount on that. Is this even, are these, no, will this fit? That's the thing, it's going to work. I should also do it the other way. I need to turn it around. Because I want the, I want the, uh, be able to slide on from the front, I think. Or do you want to slide on from the back? I don't know. If I slide, yeah, slide, no. If I screw that one on there. Okay, now we have a NATO rail on the top handle. Not really in the way of anything. Like, my index finger is just touching it. But it's not really, like, in the way. Like, it's, it's not like I'm, like, grabbing it. Like, I would have when I was over here. So that's good, but, you know, what else, What am I going to put there? Am I going to put another handle on? <laughs> kind of, like, double... <laughs> Double top handle. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Nice. Set. That's how we... That... <laughs> like, what is... I mean... Is it really that stupid? That feels loose. Why is it... Oh, because it's... Yeah. I didn't... Uh, well, that's actually, like, come proper loose. Let me actually tighten the screws down. But the downside to having it here though is like these two screws that the two holes are very close together therefore it can allow some of that that slight movement put this like further back or further forward also i keep screwing it the wrong way because it's upside down all right that's on there okay now we have two top handles although that screws kind of in the way that's annoying maybe i'd do it the other way and have the screw on top that's probably probably better but what do we <laughs> what do we think having double top handle and then i can rotate this one however then it's like pistol grip top handle regular top handle double regular top handle i can't do double pistol grip but i don't know this just seems kind of like dumb because it's useless <laughs> But, you know, I guess if you wanted to, but then, oh, but see, even that, like, that doesn't even help, because now my hand is blocking the, the screen. Like, <laughs> I'm better off just holding it by the regular top handle. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm just not going to use this extra NATO rail for a little bit, till I have something else I can mount on it. Or get a monitor. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I could mount it on top. So I'll take it off there. So we can put it either on the side here, back here, or on the 
top. I can put it on the side here, on this side, but unnecessary and it also blocks the uh, HDMI door. So there's no, no real benefit to adding it there. Um, let's see. Why is this actually something I, why is there a, there, what? There's a strap mount, like a, can you see it? GoPro, can you just be better? You can actually see it just there. Is it, that's like a little strap mount, same as on, on here, like these straps are, but slightly smaller. I wonder what that's for, because that does go all the way through. So you could mount a strap here. What is it? So you could mount top, top and top, like a, like do a, like a uh, neck strap, shoulder strap. That might be actually what that's for, because like most cameras, they'll have the two straps on the top to like something to attach the straps to. The Sony's have, you know, they have these little eyelets. Where are we? Let's go on this one. These little eyelets here. And then they have like those triangles. There's kind of like a key ring, but it's a triangle um, on there to then that these straps would then go through. But they dangle, and although, like, to Sony's credit, they are pretty stiff um, on the Sony's. On the G85, I'm pretty sure on the Lumix, they're not as stiff, so they do actually, like, dangle quite a bit. They jingle if you, like, they'll move if you shake them. So I took them off immediately on that camera, took them off immediately on this camera, and, yeah. But I think, I think Canon doesn't have them, I think they just have built-in ones. And then like Sony with the FX3 and the FX30, they just have like the built-in ones. It's like, why don't you just do that on all your cameras? Why did you go with the whole jingly triangle bits? Um, but yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my current camera bag <laughs> regarding like keeping this stuff. I might have to take out all the stuff for the G85 and keep that in. I do have like an, a broken like shoulder camera bag. Maybe I'll put, for now, I'll put all of the stuff for the G85 in that one. And then I'll just put everything for this camera in my current like actual camera bag. Then when I get my next one, either I'll keep this one for all the G85 stuff or I'll put all the G G85 stuff in that other shoulder bag or the PGY Tech One Mo actually comes with a basically a, like a little shoulder bag as well. So I might put all the G85 stuff in that and then just use the main bag for for um for like all my actual currently using stuff. Especially since I like just leave the G85 here like most of the time. It's only if I was traveling and you know wanted to actually or or you know, wanted to have two cameras for some reason, not here. Because if it's here, I'll just, if I'm filming a video, I'll just, I'll either leave this one here or put it somewhere where I can film. And it, But it doesn't leave this room basically anymore. But, I don't know, anyone think of any other, uh, any other uh, configurations, I guess, I can have? Oh wait, no, we don't want to do that. We want to go in that way. Go there, tighten that, tighten that. Tighten that all the way up, and then that is sitting flat on the table. Nice, and then let's go, let's just go full overkill bend on everything. We'll put the mic there. We'll have to unravel that a little bit to plug it in. Is that enough? That is enough. One thing maybe I will do is I'll like thread it through there so it's in nice and close. So it's not like in the way of anything. And then I can like put it right through there. Oh wait, what I actually could do. It's gonna work. Oh, I don't wanna wreck the cable though, so I'm gonna Can we is that gonna fit? Why are you not going there? Anyway. 
Let's just twist that so it's not. Anyway, okay. So that's there. Then we'll put the one I was go. The thing is that this is kind of not really practical because you can only do one input uh, for audio in this camera. So it's not really practical to have. You know, I could put that there. I like the look of having that on the on the angled one there. But for now, I think I'll chuck it on the side here. And then what oh, on the back and that doesn't really get in the way maybe i'll put it over on this side put it i'll put it that way so then i can see so then you can monitor put it there although that's where my thumb goes though my thumb would go no so i'm not going to put it there because that's where my thumb would go so i think i might have to not thread that through put this one on there and then actually, well, actually, no, to be fair, what I it's completely unnecessary, but what I could do, right, is because you can plug in a mic to the uh, transmitter, so I could plug the transmitter <laughs> into the mic and have them either on the top handle or have them somewhere else, and then put the transmitter here, or the re receiver there, plug, plug that in, where's the in output there, plug that in there, here we go. So then we have a wireless mic that is within the distance of the cord that I could just plug straight into the camera, but I'm plugging it into the wireless transmitter to then the wireless receiver that's right next to it. So it's completely unnecessary. I think I'm get definitely I'm gonna definitely do a do a short where I just have it set up like this and see if anybody notices that it's completely unnecessary. Uh, what else could I what else can I add? Let's let's see if there's anything else that I could just add to things. Now, I could put, <laughs> I could put a, oh, actually, wait, I'll have a couple of these. I could put tripod plates all over it. What else? I don't think I have anything else in here that I could. Ooh. I could put a, Go oh, I could put a GoPro mount on. If I put on, how would I do that? No, that's the thing. Okay, so, so one thing. I just put that on, on the side there, so I can just put the that on there. So one thing that is kind of annoying is because there's so many like holes, like threaded holes on this, but I don't have any just like double-sided threaded. What do they even be called? Because not screws, like not a screw or a bolt like this, where it's got one end that, with like an Allen key. But, so I could like screw one into one of these, and then I can then screw something else into that. So I can go like female to female, and just have like a male to male thread in between them. So then I could mount like my, where is it? Is it here? No, where is it? Where's my phone mount? Here. So I have this phone mount that I can't really put on this case. So what would, would be good is like having that like on like there or something. So then I can have my phone on there or a phone on there. But I have nowhere to mount it because these, these are just female quarter inch threads. So are these. And I don't have any double ended male threads. So. I can't think of any way to make this work. I think maybe the, the best thing would either just be just to get a straight threaded rod um, for a quarter inch or like a quarter inch to three eighths inch adapter, basically. So you screw the three eighths into this one and then you screw the quarter inch into that one. Which, yeah, I can't, I don't think I have any of I think the closest thing, what I could do, is literally take... No, that won't even work, because that looks like it's just... So this is a 3 8 inch thread on the Gorillapod. But it looks like so there's a thread at the bottom. Probably. There. That's... or not a thread. That's just like a... 
flathead screwdriver bit. Not bit. Bit? Screw? Thread? What would that be called? Anyway. So I could unscrew that. But then that's still only a one-sided 3 8 inch thread. But you def definitely need some like male-to-male -male threads. Because... Yeah. So that could be something that I maybe look into. Is just getting some little adapters. So I could then screw more things into this. So I could like, you know, put a phone mount here. Or it would be good if you could do it that way. I mean, that way might work. And you could just like tilt it. What you need. Or do it that way. But then it would have, then it would have to be horizontal. Or you could like screw it on like that. Yeah, that could work. Screw it on. I can't see because of the mic. You could screw it on the side like that. Put it there. Or on this side. And have a phone there. Um, I could also then... Oh, actually, no. This is one thing. Okay, so I'm going to switch from... I'm going to switch back to just this camera. And I'm going to get rid of the go for a sec. So this is... Oh, to unplug that. Hey. Oh, that GoPro is warm. Okay, so let's unscrew it. Ah. Uh, this magic arm, friction arm, whatever you call it, it's so annoying to unscrew stuff. Like, it's not that big a deal, but it, like, it sticks so well that when you unscrew it, it unscrews this bit as well, so I have to screw that back on every time. So, now the, ooh, that's a bit folded, good. Yeah, so basically, this uh, this super clamp isn't really going to be helpful. So let's see if I can undo that. Can we? Hello? Oh, yeah, same deal. It's stuck. Oh, come on! Why are you doing that? Overlay. Come on. You're doubling up on the this stuff. Right. You can tell this one hasn't been undone before. So super clamp not really useful for this. So, All right. so then I could screw this on like anywhere. Where it would be good to screw it onto? Probably not up high. Probably want it down down low. So maybe put it on in the handle. Put it like that maybe. It's probably, that seems to be like the best. Like it's either on the top handle or on the side handle. So let's screw it on there. It's just way too big of a magic arm for this. But then I can sort of position this however I want it. Let's go that. Let's go forward. Mount it like there. Then I could put bone mount. Bone mount there put phone there and boom we now have a phone on the rig for some reason it's so much heavier now too oh <laughs> what is this it's like like this isn't doing anything this like i can't use this phone as a monitor you can use like xperia phones as monitors with sony cameras but as far as i know can't use old samsung's um, but if I wanted to like watch YouTube while I was while I was filming stuff, I could. But probably like a more practical use would be to use it as like a camera, so you could have it on there and like be recording. Probably like angle it so it's actually pointing forwards. Maybe put it like that. And then actually, let's see. Bring up the camera. What sort of view? Oh, well, that's. So then we're looking at. <laughs> So you can see, you can see, you're recording there and there. So then, if you're, you know, if you're trying to do behind the scenes sort of stuff, or, or you know, if you wanted to do, you know, if you wanted to vlog and record at the same time, I guess you could. Also, why is this camera now seeing that? Uh, wait, what? What happened? Why is it seeing that now? It wasn't seeing that before. You couldn't see this before. What happened? Something happened. Oh, maybe I just got used to the 
being it being cut off. So, <laughs> I mean, there's that, but I feel like probably what would be a better use. So let's get rid of that. So you can have a phone on there. I'm gonna unscrew that, and we'll unscrew the entire thing, of course. And then we'll put on GoPro. And screw that on there. Then if I wanted to film, you know, behind the scenes stuff sort of thing, it's like, oh, I'm filming stuff, but I'm also filming behind the scenes stuff. And then maybe it would be better to have it like sort of behind a bit. Maybe like we go there. Like something like that. Could work, and then let's get let's get the battery. Let's go for a battery there. All right. So then, if we put, all right, let's see what that looks like. And then I want to change it to not narrow. We don't want narrow. Let's what is linear? No. So. We're sort of, sort of POV, not quite. Let's angle it a little bit there. And I think maybe I'll change it to wide. Yeah, we'll go with wide. And then, there we go. We have a GoPro on the, on the rig. And it's like mounted. Oh, the stabilization sort of making it look weird with the perspective because like, the mic will move, but the background won't move, or vice versa. <laughs> but yeah, that's another use for it, I guess. And you could also always do this vertically as well, if you wanted. So we could we loosen this. Turn that like that. Maybe do it a bit higher, so it's... Or... Let me put it... We have forwards on the bottom one back on that one or even out to the side we'll just go like there so then you can see that it's you know a camera and a mic but it's not taking up too much of what is going on there we go so then we got that and we've got the gopro recording vertically it's like pov sort of <laughs> and that's just sort of Wait, is that gonna be able to see that? Yeah. So I guess this could work. If you wanted to film double double content, if you want to have, you know, GoPro behind the scenes stuff and you know your main shot. Could do that. Um oh, I can't really Because the, the five, so I was gonna like, I was gonna see if I could show you what the GoPro is seeing, but the long cable that I have doesn't fit the GoPro. I bought it for the GoPro, and it didn't work. So then I just bought my A7 IV, and it's fine. So it doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, I could use my like one point something meter cable, but I don't think that's really worth it. But yeah, that's that's another cool cool thing we could do there. I don't think I'm going to be doing this much, but or maybe we could have it like over the top like that, just ridiculously high for no reason. <laughs> you know, I could probably have it a certain way. Like, I'm going to see if I can make it look. I might actually make this into a into a thing. Make if I can get it in the right position to make it look like it's a first person shooter sort of thing. So I've got like the camera, which is the gun. And then you can see my hands. <laughs> it literally looks like it's a, it looks like it's a first person shooter. Let's see, can, we, can you see that? Probably not. Hold on, let me let me plug it in. Oh, so many cables. Wait, how long is this one? I think the white one might be longer. It definitely is, yeah. 
I'm gonna plug this one into the computer. And we should be able to see what the GoPro is seeing. As long as it's plugged in though, that's the thing. It would need to be they plugged in. So now if I go to there, okay, so it is there. We're on <laughs> um let's go to just the GoPro for a sec. Alright, and we are on, hold on, let me check what lens we're on. I think we're on narrow. Lens mode, we are on narrow. Let's go wide. So we can just see a bit more. There we go. Alright, we have first person shooter mode now. <laughs> yeah, nice. It really makes everything look orange. I don't know why. But, yeah. This, there's definitely something I could definitely make. Some, some sort of content like this. First person, uh, first person shooter camera edition. I don't know. But yeah, cool idea. Nobody steal my idea. I don't know if anyone's done this before, but or it doesn't balance very well though. <laughs> it wants to tip back. But I like that. And then we could also do it. I, whoa! Oh no! Oh no! Ah, magic arm. The downside. Oh no! I'm touching the screen now too. Alright, if we put it this way, then we can be like reverse, reverse POV, reverse first, first, reverse first person. So it's like, we're this way, but you can see me. This looks like, uh, that definitely looks like there's been, there's definitely like shots in movies and stuff that have been from this sort of angle, where like on the, whatever the uh, character is, you know using and it's just sort of like uh we're walking along it's like oh i'm filming now and doing the thing we whoa uh this friction arm that's yeah the small rig friction arms not the best oh sorry i forgot we're, we're at this camera now <laughs> i was looking at i was looking at the actual camera but we got the gopro on this one but, and then, what I could do, is, I'm gonna put this so it doesn't, like, I'm gonna set this up so it's not gonna tip over when I let go of it. Let's just go there. And we'll switch back over to, uh, uh, this one, for now. That's not gonna tip over, but what I will do, I'll get rid of this wireless mic, because it's there for no reason. I'll get rid of this one. Literally have two mics on the camera, I'm not using either of them because we have a shotgun mic right here plugged into the computer. Um, okay, and now, we'll get <laughs> my other USB cable, plug that into the camera. Bit dusty. Because it just sort of like lives next to my desk there like that. All right, let's turn this on. Then I could even go like triple camera Let's see, and if we go to this one, and I'll uh, reset it real quick, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, oh sorry, there we go, is that going to work, is it working, we good, there we go, alright, so now we're on this camera, it just looks so much better, <laughs> but then we can go, let's go to the dual camera one again, so we're on this camera, and this camera, and then we add another one. We're gonna add uh, SM4 USB there. We'll make that smaller. We'll put it like in the middle there. I don't know. I don't know how would I, how I would actually do this. I need to reset this this one. Hold on. All right. Ah, uh, where are we? Your camera. All right. We now have all three cameras. So we got the one on the camera, we got the camera itself, and we got the other camera, which is like the main camera, but it's like that would be the behind the scenes one, I guess. I don't know. Which one do I even look at? Do I look at that one? Do I look at that one? Do I look at this one? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what this turned into. The GoPro just definitely does not look that good, though. Like when you compare it to two mirrorless cameras, you can really tell how how not 
good quality it is compared to, you know, good mirrorless camera. Well, good mirrorless camera. Okay, mirrorless camera. But yeah, there we go. So this is one of the things I could do, do with it. <laughs> and because it's like on like the heavy rig, it would be reasonably naturally stabilized as well. So it's that. Also, I think the battery like <laughs> the battery like came out of the GoPro, which is fine because the um oh are we good? Oh, and we're back. Oh, okay, that's that's nice. It's automatic. I usually have to reset the other cameras to make them work better. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't I don't know about the GoPro, but definitely being able to have it like some I'll, I'll do something about uh, about making some sort of content with the GoPro on the camera. It'll probably be some sort of like first person shooter parody type type thing. Oh, maybe I'll do like oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do some like drop shots or something. Three sixty no scopes with <laughs> with the camera. <laughs> uh. Yes, that's, I, I'm, yeah, good ideas, me. All right, so let's get rid of that one. Wait, no, I'll just replace this one. So let's just make that full size again. And then I'm gonna replace the GoPro. So I'll put that like bearish and then don't fall while it's, it's just like sitting on the edge there. Now I'll just like crop that in to there and then I'll turn the GoPro off. And I'll plug it and get rid of, get rid of that. And I'll just take the entire, oh, do the thing, unscrew, no, don't turn that. Uh, all right, let's see if this works. Uh. Oh, you know, oh, actually, one thing I can do, benefit of having this NATO rail, I can then slide the handle down to the bottom, so then it allows some room for the cable. Ah, now I can rest it and the cable won't mess up. All right, let's see if I can actually unscrew this. No, unscrew, what are you doing? Why is that turning? Oh, I'm not going to be able to get this magic arm off now. Okay. Oh, no, you started doing it. Oh, wait. Oh, it is doing it. Okay. That's annoying. Definitely would... Yeah, if I'm gonna use this magic arm actually, like, on a rig, I would definitely want a better one than this one. These small rig magic arms are... They're known to be just sort of, like, not the best. All right. So we know that works. That's good to know. Now we have this camera. I don't have anything to put it on. I mean, I could put, could put it on that tripod, but why? Like the, the whole idea was to have, have the whole rig set up, not oh, <laughs> vlogging with, <laughs> with the handles and the rig. I mean, you can do it two hand. Actually kind of works, but your shoulders would definitely get tired after a while. I wonder if, the, if there's a, a way to hold it that it would not be painful after a while. I don't know. But I think I'm just going to unplug this uh, this camera. We do not need it on. Get rid of that and we'll go back to... No, this one. Ah! Uh. Why you do that, Everly? Stream elements, what's going on? Right, and just for being on for like 10 minutes, maybe. Camera is warm. All right, now I need to put this back up to the top where it was. So then we can put it down like that. Nice. Oh, one thing I forgot to do as well. I more or less just have that five meter cable just sort of shoved in next to my desk 
just out of the way because you know I use it often enough that I don't want to have to like coil it up and put it away somewhere every time so I just sort of like loosely coil it up and shove it next to my desk um so with the strap so I don't like this whole dangly bit here but I don't want to like cut it off or anything because I want to be able to loosen it although to be fair I'm not ever really going to want it like more loose than like that because like that's plenty enough to move there's plenty of movement there and there's like still so much left but I think what I'll end up doing is I tried two ways so I can either so there is enough room to tuck it in here a bit so I can either tuck it in there make a little loop at the bottom like that or I flip it over and we tuck it in the top with the other one so then there's a loop over the back of it I don't know what would be better so it's either loop on the side like that here or a loop at the bottom so I don't know which I would prefer Put back up here it is nice I can just like stand the camera up on its side like that and the handle is benefit of the handle being nice and like long and flat is that uh, you can just like sort of rest it on its end like that All right, let's see how far I get this like tucked in not particularly far I feel like that's a bit less out of the way a bit more out of the way than the one that goes across here so I think I think that's the way I'll do it but I want it a little bit tighter I think just a little bit so then I can be here we can record oh and then that's easy enough too to reach like if I'm holding it this way I can reach the record button here easy enough or you know I can reach it with my index finger here so I go index finger or I can go thumb on my left hand pretty well if I was holding by the top handle I just go left hand press the uh the record button on the back here yeah nice pretty happy with uh with the rig overall with like the choices that I made and what I got like I yes a recording top handle would be cool or even a recording side handle they'd make them as well but I think I really do like this rotating side handle. I think it. I think it is good. Like there are side handles that, like they have a few wooden side handles. They have some that are shaped sort of like this, and then they also have some that are like really like molded and like look ergonomic sort of thing. Like they've got a whole th big thing that like sticks sort of between sticks back like here between your uh, your fingers, like your thumb and your index finger. So it actually allows some support on top, so you can sort of like that weight can actually like pull down on your hand and it's like resting on top so you don't have to be holding it as much so something like that would be cool and i know they do make left and right hand versions of that so like i don't know if i feel like this isn't enough on this side who knows maybe i get a right hand side and just have like a double handle have a handle on each side that just means i don't have access to the settings so i feel like that's that's the benefit of having you know a left handle but then keeping your right hand on on the side like this is you can access your settings you can touch all the dials and the buttons and everything like that you can the joystick for focusing any other yeah like literally any settings you'd want to you'd want to access just sort of there and then just having the strap is just just adds that stability whereas if you had you know handle out here handle out here yes you would have more stability but then to just to press a button you would have to let go with one and like do stuff on the back like this or like you know you want to do a dial or whatever and holding it by holding it closer into the middle like holding it by the you know the actual grip of the camera here is easier than holding it here because all of the weight is on this side whereas in this one more of the weight is closer to it because moment arms and physics and stuff so it's easier to hold this one and additionally with the strap on it makes it easier as well but it's easier to hold by the grip of the camera than the grip further out um yeah and then it's easier again to hold by the top handle because all the weight is below it and it's pretty well balanced 
It does want to tip slightly left just because it's got the uh, handle a bit further out, and this handle isn't isn't particularly light because um, it is, I think, mostly metal. The one one big downside I think I've noticed. Well, okay, let's go through a couple of downsides that I that I sort of noticed. One is just like this thumb. It's like it's it sort of just rests on top of the cage now, um, whereas it it used to rest sort of on the. I, I don't even know where it would rest. I guess it would rest in a similar spot. Depends how I'm holding it. If I'm holding it like this, and I got my finger on the uh, shutter button, then it sort of rests on these back buttons, like either on the AF on button or the the dial, uh, not the dial, the joystick. So sort of resting back on there, or maybe on the on the shutter speed dial there. But now, especially if I'm holding it like this with my fingers down and not my finger on there, I feel like unless you're taking photos, you don't really need to hold it like that. You like start recording and then you're just like, all right, we're here. That's a bit more stable. My thumb just sort of sits on top and there's nowhere nice for it to sit. So it just sort of goes in that cold shoe, which is okay, but nothing special. Um, also the aperture ring on this lens, which, I can see if I tilt it down because of the, uh... so there, you can see it there, the one I'm moving. The aperture ring is harder to see now. That's, that's really the thing. Because it does have like its indicator. Oh, I keep... Let's get rid of this mic. We'll take that off. Right. So the indicator is right here. And it's just a little bit harder to see. I have to like, tilt it up a bit more to be able to see it just because the front of the cage and the attachment of the handle just sort of gets a little bit in the way. So I do have to like sort of look up a bit more. And then even if I was, let's say I was out taking photos, because honestly when I'm taking photos is actually when I more commonly change aperture. So I either just stay at like 1.8 or if I'm like, all right, we're doing a bit of a landscape, I want more in focus, we'll stop down a bit. Um, here it's not too bad, but without the cage, I could see it from about this angle. But with the cage, I need to turn it up to like here to actually see the the indicator. So it's just just sort of that difference where I need to really like tilt it just to just to see, which not a big deal. And again, if you're taking photos, so if I had it, if I was taking photos, I would just have it like this. We got the we got the one strap loose enough that I can reach the shutter button, and then I'd just be out here, just you know. Uh, we're at 1.8. Yeah, cool. Take photos, take photos. Take photos. Definitely vertically, I think, as well, will be really good for this handle because then I don't have to hold on to the camera quite as much and I can just sort of, you know, be there. I don't know. But yeah, take photos and then, like, yeah, it's not a big deal. And to be fair, honestly, the majority of the time when I'm taking photos, I like to keep the aperture as wide open as possible. So it's not really that big of a deal. Now what would, I think, what would have probably been, I actually don't know. So I know there's some cages, I'm pretty sure Condor Blue makes a cage for the a 74 where you have, like, you put like a quick release on the bottom of the camera and then you can slide it into the cage. So you can actually easily take it in and out of the cage itself with a quick release plate. So then this wouldn't be the fully broken down form of the camera. It would just be the camera itself. So that would be something good. Although Condor Blue stuff is way more expensive than small, small rig stuff. That's sort of the main reason why I didn't go for a Condor Blue cage. But also, if I didn't keep the cage on, I wouldn't be able to keep the strap on. And I do want to keep the strap on when I'm just walking around taking photos. It just means that the camera's a bit heavier and chunkier than normal and it's a little bit less comfortable i guess to hold with particularly with my left hand like just because it's like here there's like you know metal digging in my hand here rather than just like you know holding just the camera it's just a bit more boxy but overall should be pretty good especially for video which is to be fair mostly what these sorts of cages are for you would rarely uh, have a cage like this for strictly for photos. 
generally like, I think like L brackets are more common for photography than full cages like this. But yeah. Got that that uh what's it called? What's it called? Arca Swiss compatible bottom. Uh, so we can slot right into the Mantis Pod Pro when I get it. In like a week. Uh, so that'll be good. Then I basically the only times I'll need to put a plate on the bottom or put anything on the bottom is if I want to put it on I want to put it on this here at my um like in my little studio if I want to put it either on a tripod or on this but if I'm putting it on if I'm putting it on the mantis pod straight on here should work um, and then this easy enough to screw in just you know pick a hole start screwing and then because it has that built-in let's go like there and I've got the flathead screwdriver right here easy enough to just easily screw on and do that boom and set we now have mounting plate on the bottom and I can just put it right into the capture clip right there and then we're on so, but this would obviously be mounted to something but yeah so I, I think that that'll be fine and then yeah it'll just be swapping this with uh, either so either have nothing the PG Wide plate or the Peak Design plate, which is super annoying. I wish I could just have one of them. But and I've mentioned this before, the uh Peak the PG Wide plate fits in the Peak Design catch clip, but it doesn't lock because it doesn't have the uh like the angle bits on the bottom here. So it'll go in but it won't lock. You can't lock it in, it'll just sort of slide out if you pick it up. So that's not great. And for some reason, the I think the angles and like the, the like the size of the chamfers or something on the the two different plates are different because the the Peak Design plate doesn't fit in this. It's like slightly too big somehow. It just doesn't go in. So that's super annoying. I was hoping that I could just keep one plate on like all the time, and then that's that's it. That's just that just stays on the camera, and I never take it off. But that's not going to be the case. So if if i'm using it like in here like in the studio i guess we'll call it which is my bedroom um then we'll put this on or keep this on and then yeah if i'm if i'm going out maybe vlogging or just going out and taking the tripod and plan on using it on on the tripod is i'll just have nothing on so then i can just go slide it straight on the tripod um or if i am maybe walking around just taking photos then I would put the peak design plate on. So then I could put in the capture clip. Now this will be a lot more a lot a lot more weight on the capture clip. So this is bigger and heavier. But it should be fine. Especially once I do get my next bag. It should be a bit better than this bag because it's a bit a bit bigger. Um but then I'll also be able to use that plate. So even if I do have a plate on the bottom, either either the PGY tech or the Peak design plate will still work on the Mantis pod because it has a proper like Arca Swiss mount where it slides in and you can and you like screw it and you like tighten it down. Whereas this one is just a square, you clip it in and that's it. So I think that'll be fine. It's just it's like one extra step that I wish I didn't have to do. But she'll be right. I don't know if there's any other way that I could have it work unless I got different mounting solutions. Like if I just went all, well, I thought it would have been fine because it's like, oh, I'll get all Arca Swiss compatible stuff. And then they're not even compatible with each other. So that's kind of annoying. But at least, at least it'll be good to not have to use this Gorilla Pod anymore because this mounting system, like everything else, I mean, actually no, I was gonna say everything else about it is fine, but it's, it's not. With the Gorilla Pod One, I don't like this mounting system because one, it rattles. It like it doesn't lock in very good, and the uh, the only way to screw it in properly is with a flathead. Which now that I have a flathead screwdriver just with me all the time, just on the camera, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, still kind of annoying. And then just just the 
the way that the grill pod works. Like, it's good in theory, but one thing I notice is switching between tripod mode and vlog mode. So let's say I wanted to like, you know, bend them forwards like this. So if I'm vlogging like this, or right, okay, I'm vlogging, 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 but I want to put the camera down and I have to bend them out and it's hard to bend them consistently. And then you got to level it and then you got to, uh, we've got to adjust the ball head to make sure the camera's level, stuff like that, put it down. And then we've got to pick it up again. And then we've got to do all that backwards and like, oh, and then we've got to get that way. And then, and we're back to vlogging. Whereas, and I'll make a video about this when I when I do get the uh, Mantis Pod. But the Mantis Pod, you literally just like, if it's sit, sat down as a tripod, you pick it up, you flip two of the legs back into the third leg, and then it's there. And it's like already like on that, on like this sort of angle as well. So it's just there. And then you want to put it down, you flip the two legs back out, put it down. It's so simple. So that'll be good. It'll also be good now, also, because I'll be getting a uh, PGY Tech One Mo backpack. I'm gonna need it because this <laughs> this bag does not fit all my stuff in it anymore. Uh, especially once I get another lens for this camera. Once I get another lens, then there's no hope. I li like literally to fit this this rigging stuff in. I'll need to put in. I'll need to take out some stuff. So, yeah, but it'll be good to have a bigger bag. So I can have camera, microphone, mic or microphones, because I'll have both. Both of these microphones, all my rig sort of stuff, handles and whatnot. Any other mounting sort of stuff like this, cables and charges and stuff, which I think what I what I, th I think I'm gonna do is I have the uh, there's a case that the GoPro came in. There's like a hard, hard like zippered case. I think what I'll do is I'll put all my cables and similar sort of stuff, like little electronics, like maybe like, like all my cables and little stuff like this, like the uh, USB adapters, anything that'll fit in there, it will, that'll just go in there. And then that's my little like electronics uh, case that would just go in my camera bag. And then that just slots in. There's like, if I need a cable, I know it's in there. And I don't have to like go into this zippered pouch in my, like in my camera bag right now, uh, I got this cable out before, um, but like in this one, one, it's kind of hard to get into. And then I just have like a bunch of cables in there. But if I have all my cables in a little hard case that I can just fully open, should in theory uh, be easier to access. And then they're all in one place because I actually currently have multiple cables and things like this not in there with all that stuff. So we could just keep everything all in one place and then all in the main parts of the bag i would have just you know have a compartment for the camera have a compartment for a lens have a compartment for audio stuff have a compartment for rigging stuff handles and whatnot and you know my sd card holder and anything else that i have is there anything else in there gopro I have a little compartment for the gopro stuff the annoying part about the that gopro case is it's way too big like because it comes comes in got this like paper like cardboard i guess sort of like lining i guess where, where everything fits in perfectly like what comes with the gopro it was like the gopro the battery and the cable and that's it but if you want to put anything else in there you have to take that out but then now the case is way too big to fit that and it'll just rattle around inside it so that's why i sort of want to put like a bunch of cables in there so one it'll sort of fill it up but then also it'll because it's cables they'll like they'll fill it up even if they don't actually fill it up sort of thing and they won't rattle around too much so that's the plan at the moment. I'll need to have a think and see if I can find another use of this, or if I think of anything or see see anything, maybe that like would benefit from from having like a NATO rail. Because right now I only have the two handles, but I was I was I was actually thinking of getting a monitor mount as well, uh, just so I could mainly actually just so I could mount this phone holder to it so then when i'm when actually when i'm streaming and i'm using this camera i have it up because this camera stays here this is my main streaming camera and i actually put the uh magic arm on the super clamp well the super clamps are usually attached and that'll go clamp onto here and then this would actually just be over against this wall behind me with the light on it and then what I have been doing is 
you can't really see it, but up here, you can see the grip head right in the very corner. That's got my mic arm on it. So then I would screw on the ball head. And it's so excessively complicated. I just take the ball head off the gorilla pod and screw that onto the mic arm and then put, where'd it go? Put the, uh, the phone holder onto the, the ball head and then put the phone in that. And that's just like so many steps, especially because it's like, it's things that I don't want to just leave there. Like I don't want to leave the ball head on there and I don't want to leave this on there. And I don't want to leave the ball head off the main gorilla pod. Cause these are all things that like, I want to use other times. Like I want to keep this in my camera bag just in case I need to put my phone on anything. And I don't want to separate these cause now, cause I can't really use this for anything but a mic right now because it's a three eighths inch thread. So yeah, that's just, that's not a very efficient way of doing it. So I wanted to get a monitor mount. So then once I do get a monitor, boom, done. Like then I could just mount a monitor to the, to the rig. But then before I get a monitor, I could still mount this to the, to the rig. I could have that, you know, on the top, on the side, wherever. Could I even mount it on the top? I don't think I even could. No. Oh, well, I'd put it on the handle actually. I'd put it. Go like it, get like a cold shoe one and put it there, or put it on the um, on the actual camera hot shoe, and then I could have this here, and then I can read chat on my old phone, which is what I have been using to read chat when I'm up there anyway. Um, and then but then it's just straight on the camera. So then one, when I'm reading chat, I'm looking pretty close to the camera. I'm not like looking down here. Uh, and then also it's just like all together, and then I don't have to you know, set up a whole thing just to put my phone near my camera. I could just like, ah, oh, screw this one thing on. Done. Because the monitor mount would stay on the handle probably the majority of the time. And I just screw this on, put the phone in, done. Did it. Easy. So maybe I'll have a look into getting a monitor mount that's uh, a, or a monitor mount at some point. I don't feel like I need to get a NATO rail one, even though I do have now a spare NATO rail. But, I don't know. So we'll see. Anyway, I think, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start packing up before I end the stream. Uh, made such a mess. So let's get this undone. Is that? I don't even know. Get this GoPro off here. That's fine. That can, that can stay like that. And then we want to put the super clamp back on here. And then this can go back onto the C stand right next to me. It makes it look so far away. It's like right there, but it looks so far on the lens. Cause it's a, t is it? I can't tell if it's like distorting stuff much. I think it is. Yeah, it definitely makes my fingers look longer when they're at the edge. Yeah, it looks like it's really far away. It's not. It's right there. So I'm gonna now put this on. Oh, how do I have it like that? I will put it up here though because I do have it raised a little bit. And then we'll put that. Something like that. That should be fine. Why is that not tight? Hello? That should be good. Right, so that's on there now. Put glasses on too. It's getting a little bit late. Okay. Now, I don't think... Okay, that can just go in camera bag. That can stay there. This can go... Let's pack up the wireless go too. Put the dead cat back on here. And then they can go back in the pouch. There's one thing I haven't used as much as I thought I was going to is the uh, wireless mics. Now I have used them some. Obviously I used them in the video that I made about them. Um, I've used them when I've done the POV photography stuff. That's the main reason that I got them actually to do the POV photography. Um, and I have used them for... 
Actually, I used them on stream once, actually. So I think I plugged this into it. Um, but that's actually something that I might do over Christmas when I go back home. I think I'm going to take my computer because I want to do, I want to, I want to actually like pump out some content or, or at least like make a bunch of content and then maybe post it over the next few weeks. So I'm going to take my computer down and so I can edit down there and maybe do a stream or two. And if I do stream, then luckily I have this mic and the wireless go too. And because they, they all work as USB mics. I was like trying to think it's like, oh, what am I going to use for a mic? Cause like, I'm, I'm not going to have to take an audio interface with me as well. I just want to take my computer, mouse, keyboard, maybe a monitor and that's it. Oh, and headphones. Uh, but it's like, I don't want to have to take an interface with me, but then how am I going to have a mic? But then I'm like, do I take that Yeti? Does it have a blue Yeti right here? Like, do I take that? Cause that's a USB mic. That'll just at least work. I don't, don't have to take an interface. And then I remembered I had two USB mics with me all the time in my camera bag. It's like, and, I, and they're good mics too. Like if this one's pretty close to your face, that sounds great. And I can obviously have the wireless one either used just as the wireless one, or I can plug this into it and have it really close, even if my PC is like over there or whatever. So that's the plan for that. And then I'll just use this camera to stream because I can just go USB into it. Um, I will take my other camera as well. I don't know if I'm going to take the cam link and the HDMI cable. I haven't decided that yet. Um, just cause like I can stream with this one. So with USB, so I'm going to just do that and I'll have a USB cable with me. It's just like, then it's just another cable I'd need to pack if I take the HDMI cable. Uh, and then, and the cam link as well, which is like, which is easier to pack, but it's just like, it's another thing to unplug and take with me and then you know, set back up when I get back. So I'm not decided on that yet, but yeah, if I stream and obviously for the videos that I make, actually pretty much all the videos I make down there, I'll have to use, I'll have to use uh, this mic or the wireless go to because that's like all I've got for portable stuff because I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take the NTG one with me or this mic because I'm, I'm not going to take an interface. The, uh, the only thing is though, if I do stream, I'm going to need to adjust things in OBS and just in general, because without Wavelink, I won't have submixes or anything. So I'll just have to adjust volumes either by app individually or however I do it. I'll just have to do it a bit differently, but the streams I think will be a much simpler. If I stream from back home, it'll be much simpler. Also the internet's not going to be as good. So I don't know how that, how well that's going to go, but we'll see. Anyway, now I've got to decide whether I leave the rig built or if I leave it unbuilt and put it in the camera bag. Because I know even if I don't, even, even if I, if I put it in the camera bag tonight, I know tomorrow I'm just going to get it out just to play with it. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> if you didn't see the, uh, the short that I posted last night, the, uh, the, like, the just, I like, just like the whole, me, me since I got my new camera. I just like to hold it, okay? Because right? I just, I'll literally just be sitting, like, if I'm just like sitting at my desk here, like just watching some YouTube or something like that, I'll just like have my camera. And I'll just be like chilling. I'll just be here. I'll just like have it on my leg. I'll just be like playing with the dials or something like that. Just have it in my hand. It's like to, I don't know, when I get something new, even, even, not even when I get something new, I've done that with my G85 since I've got it. Okay, if I had it, if it wasn't like on the tripod here and it wasn't like in my bag, like, zipped up like on the floor over there if i had my bag out i would just like have the camera in my hand just sort of like messing around with it not not doing anything never like filming anything rarely taking photos but i just just like to just you know hold it so i know that if i do pack it up tonight i will just get it out tomorrow put it all together and just mess around with it um so i don't know if it's even worth packing up properly Especially since I don't really have room in my camera bag for all this stuff at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. Take it all back home for Christmas. I don't know, but look at that thing. Look at this. Look at it. All I need now is more lenses. Get a bigger lens. I really, I really want to get 135 and the 50 millimeter G Masters. They're the lenses that I want, but they're also like 
27, 2800 dollars each. And it's like that's so much money to spend that that much money either on a 24 to 70 G Master or the Tamron 35 to 150, which I've planned on getting for ages. Which would it would be great because I could go like you know 35 F2 up to 150 f2.8 but it's not 1.8 you know and it's not one it's not g master level it's not 1.2 at 50 it's not 1.8 at 135 it's, oh, i don't know like definitely bang for the buck the Tamron makes so much more sense but those those that 50 and the 135 look so nice and apparently they're just like phenomenal but also, I can't afford to get any of them at the moment, so I need to get some more money. Speaking of which, the first link in the description is a tip button there. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, I forgot I left it. Yeah, that was when I hit 200 subs, so that's been a while. Whenever that was. But it was still, yeah, we're at 336 now. Yeah. So I think tomorrow, well actually, tomorrow I'm going to edit the video that I filmed today, maybe get it done. I don't know if I'm going to finish it or not. Depends because I don't think I have any other plans for tomorrow. So I'm going to edit the video that I filmed today. What am I going to do this? I'm going to just I'm just going to have like a pocket full of Allen keys that are the same size <laughs> at some point because I've got this and I got one that came with the uh, the snaplock plate and I'm getting another one of these snaplock plates as well. So I'll have another another one. And I've got the one that came with the uh, pig design capture clip. Maybe I'll even get it. I don't know. It might, one one might come with the um, what's it called? One might come with the uh, mantis pod as well. I'm not sure. So I might end up having like five of the same size Allen keys. Hmm. It's been a weird stream. I've been talking a lot, and there's been apparently 62 views, but nobody's said anything. This is so weird. Usually, at least someone will say something. The thing is, this is exciting to like, you know, and be like, oh yeah, now I can do this cool like handheld filming sort of stuff but I don't do much of like this sort of filming like it's it's all like vertical stuff for reels or or it's just stuff on a tripod with me talking so I need I definitely need to start doing more especially for just like my own stuff like the YouTube stuff I need to start doing more like filmmaking sort of stuff, you know? I need to utilize, utilize these things. Now, I definitely will use it all. But that's different. And also, I don't know if I'm going to film them fully vertically or, like, horizontally, then crop it. I don't know. The benefit of filming vertically is that you have 4K fully being downsampled to 1080, so it is going to be a better quality image. But then you don't have the freedom of framing. If you miss framing a little bit, you're kind of like, well, you either just have to do another take or you get stuck with that. Whereas if you have it this way, if you're a little bit off to the side, you can easily just move the move the frame slightly to the side for a certain shot or like keyframe it so it like moves or something like that. Keen to use this. Not quite sure exactly what I'm going to use it for in the very near future, at least for the next like couple weeks. But I will, I'm sure I'll find something to use it for. I'll probably try and actually one of these days before, before I go home for Christmas, I might try and find, find some time to go take some photos so I can test out how it works with just the strap on and taking photos with the cage and the strap. Um, and then, I don't know, it's gonna be something I can, do I have a video notion where I? That took a while. Let's 
Send me something that I can. Uh, what is this? Notion AI. What is going on? Meeting you. Huh? Um, okay. Not now. So, the thing is, like, a lot of my, like, short form content that I have planned is of this camera. So, I can't use this camera to film it, which is annoying because this is my best camera. But if I want to make the, vi the video about the camera, I kind of have to, like, film it on another camera. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, the main YouTube videos. Now, I do want to do a review of this light that I have up here. I want to do a video on the comparison between this camera and that camera. Which, of course, I can get B-roll of that camera with this camera, but then I have to get B-roll of this camera with that camera. And I guess I could do some, like, proper, like, test shots, I guess. Be like, all right, I'm going to film this shot with this camera, and then I'll film that shot with that camera. But then to make it fair, I probably shouldn't use the rig. But <laughs> for fun, I should use the rig. I don't know. Um, and then I'll obviously do a video on the rig itself. Um, so like basically what I've done in the last two hours, two and a half hours, but in like 15 minutes. <laughs> it's been two and a half hours just talking about four products. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Well, five technically, because there's the this, but I'm not using this, I don't think it really counts. Um, I also want to do a video on how to use a real camera for streaming. So I'm going to be doing, that's one of the, probably one of the next few I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do a video on how the a7 IV is for vlogging. Because uh, i got a few things to talk about, about on that. What else? What else was that? Oh, we got the custom buttons one, but I filmed that today. So I've got to edit that. I filmed for like 40 minutes. I need to, I need to like, just be a bit more concise. So the editing's a bit easier. I remember like back in the day, I used to, well, back in the day, like less than a year ago. <laughs> I, um, I used to film a video and I'd record for like 10, 15 minutes max. Now, when I film a video, I'm recording for like 30, 40 minutes for a 15 minute video. And it's just, it makes editing so much longer. And then I also do end up just like sitting there for a lot of time, just like sitting there, not doing anything, like thinking or something like that. But it's also a lot more setup. Um, the idea was for it to be not as much setup. That's the whole idea for the behind the C-Sand thing. But, you know, moving the C-Sand, putting the light where I need to put it and like just working around the small space that I have, just kind of annoying. So it's a little bit more. And then also having, you know, not having a mic already on this it would be good if I could just keep a mic on here I don't have a spare mic and I want to keep this one at my desk because if I didn't then I would only use it like when I shot videos which is you know generally once a week um and I don't want to have to use that this mic every time I like the entire time I stream every time because I wanted to, I wanted to have two I wanted to I wanted to be able to switch a different so if, like when i'm doing like this now because because imagine if i was doing this entire stream having to keep this mic in my face the entire time then it's like it's just sort of in the way if i want to move around when i got up and did stuff it just wouldn't work so definitely beneficial to have the shotgun mic here at the computer hmm. but yeah i think Maybe I'll just call it there. What is it? It's like 10, 10 40. We've been gone for two hours and 39 minutes. So I don't, I can't think of anything else that I wanted to say. Ooh, that, ah, oh. ah, oh, so I can't stand the camera up anymore like that. So I can, I used to be able to, like, without this handle on, I could stand the camera up on the lens hood and it would, oh, now it's weighted the other way. Now it's falling that way. Without the cage and everything on, I could just stand it up and it would stay like this. Not super stable because it's one of these lens hoods with like the longer front and front, uh, top and top and bottom because it's a wide lens. Why one of the one of the things I actually like about this lens on this camera? No, not this lens. This lens. 
this lens because it has like the fully circular lens hood it's 25 mil so i can just like kind of see that i can put it on the desk like that and it just stays there i can put the camera down like that you know camera body here on top of it and it just stays there so i like that one of the other reasons why i want one of those uh g master primes because i think everything past the 35 all have fully circular lens hoods like that i think the 24 still has a like it, the 24 would have one like this because the 24 is only four millimeters longer than this but yeah with the with the 50 the 135 the 85 but i mentioned why i um don't really want the 85 as much i really do want an 85 but they just someone needs to make a better 85 Sony, make a better 85 mil. Um, but yeah, they're, them all having that like fully circular lens hood, so you can just like put the camera down and it just stays there and it's stable. It's a little, it's a little thing, but it it can make a big difference. Although with the rig now, it's it's like I put the camera down like that. Although, oh, I guess actually no. So when when I put it down. The lens actually doesn't touch the desk anymore. That's something I actually hadn't noticed yet. But the lens doesn't touch the desk. However, with bigger lenses, it, it probably will. So it might even like tilt back a little bit, like from here to there. It might with uh, so with the Tamron 35 to 150, that's pretty pretty big lens. The the Tamron 150 to 500, which is another lens I want to get. That's a big lens as well. So it's like it might even be more so. But, yeah. Um, let's see, anything else I want to mention? I keep recognizing so many of the songs that keep st keep starting, like ones that I've used in videos before. Just because I use the same video, the same songs in videos that I, a, a lot of them at least, that I have on, on this playlist on Spotify. It's definitely good to just be able to like, uh, we want to shoot on that angle. And I can just keep the handle where I want it. But uh, we're shooting down now. All right, we're shooting straight up. I guess we'd probably do that, hey? If you shoot straight up, have both of them vertical. Hmm. Oh, I get, wait, I, I tried this before, but for the vertical, vertical shooting. So it's like here, have that one sort of on an angle and then there, yeah, that's probably, that's probably, honestly, how I'll probably use it if I'm shooting like this, and then similar sort of thing vertically that they would need a, um, would need a, uh, need a rail on the bottom, which kind of messes with things. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to call it there. We'll, uh, should be back on... Wait, so today is Saturday. Monday is the 19th. So I'll, prob I'll probably stick to my normal schedule at the moment. So we've got Saturday, which is today, 19th. So I'll probably stream on Monday, which is the 19th. Uh, Wednesday is the 21st, so I'll probably stream on, on that night as well. After that, I don't know. Maybe won't stream until maybe the following Monday. Maybe like 26th might be the next one after next Wednesday. Um, and then maybe again on the 28th. If I haven't packed up all my stuff there. Because I'm pretty sure I'll be coming back home on the 29th. I think. Um, so I might stream on the 28th. But if I've packed everything up already, then I obviously won't. But I probably won't have packed everything up. So yeah, there'll be a couple of, probably a couple of streams from back home. I'll be trying to film, I'm, I think I'm going to focus on filming shorts um, when I'm back home. Because I'll be, I'll be back there for like a week. And I'm going to try and focus on filming sh a lot of shorts there. Because um, it'll be easy to edit. Because I could like, take, I don't know, 10 to 30 minutes to edit a short. Whereas it can take a couple hours to to edit a full video 
So I'll try and get the video that I filmed today edited tomorrow. So then that can be ready for Thursday. It's Saturday and I've already filmed the video and I'm going to edit it tomorrow. It's crazy. Usually, <laughs> during like normal normal times, I would film it on Sunday and not edit it until the Wednesday. Or maybe I'd start editing on the Sunday night and then finish editing on the Wednesday. But I'm going to try and get this video done and like uploaded, scheduled, either tomorrow or Monday. And then maybe I'll try and get another one done before I leave as well. So then we'll have two videos. Then I can have one scheduled for... Uh, maybe, there'll be, maybe there'll be one or two weeks where I have multiple videos during the week. Or I'll just save one. Maybe I'll just be like a week in advance. Which will actually make it easy. That, no, I think I might actually end up doing that. Because unless there's any... I don't think I have any like time sensitive videos. Because I'm not big enough to have time sensitive videos with like new products or like anything like that. So I think I'll probably end up... It, the, the extra videos that I did film in the next week or two, I'll just sort of like keep them. So then I'll just be a week ahead. So then I, there's not the pressure of, uh, I need to film this video today. And then in a couple of days, I need to edit it and I need to get it done and it needs to be finished. It just allow, allows me to like, okay, this week I'm not going to, you know, don't need to finish a video, but I want to get it mostly done. And then, you know, the following week, that's when I finish it. And then I'm still, you know, not behind. I don't want to get behind. Even though these are all self-imposed like deadlines, because it's me that decided that I want to do the schedule, but I do want to commit to doing, and I have I have been pretty good at it as well. Like I don't think I've missed a week in quite a while. I've been doing one video a week for months, pretty sure. Um, but I do also want to commit to doing at least one short a week, possibly more. But over the next couple of weeks, I'll definitely make quite a few um, short. So they'll probably just sort of go up more or less just like when they're done. Unless I unless I make it multiple in one day, then I'll probably do them like, you know, a day apart sort of thing. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. I will be back on the live stream in two days on Monday night. So, and I'll probably just get back to gaming on that one. I'm surprised I didn't even do any gaming on this one. I uh, was not expecting to just talk for two and a half hours about Emery, but there you go. I did it. These are more the type of streams that I want to do anyway. Like I want to do more of these types of streams where I talk about stuff rather than just playing games the whole time. But uh, yeah. So I'll be back on Monday. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Go watch some videos if you still still want to stay on the YouTube for a bit longer. Um, and yeah, I'll be back on Monday. Okay, bye.